else to feel. something else to feel. else to feel. Hello, hello, welcome everybody. So this was supposed to start 10 minutes ago <laughs> and well, technical difficulties here at the Gur Lab, the lab of Gur, a lab of Gur. <laughs> Uh, we're going to get into this in just one moment. Uh, let me just read some comments. Uh, Ryan the Presbyterian, let's try again for a stream. Email me. Gavin is a doofus. <laughs> uh, to be fair to Gavin, I think he's a nice guy. He's, he's, for the most part, always been pretty pleasant with me. So, you know, I try to return the treatment people give to me back to them. If, you, if, the, if somebody treats me good, I will treat them in kind. Uh, or something along those lines. And just so we know the hashtags for today, one of them is no wrench for people named Bond. And speaking of Bond, there he is, looking all pale and wrenchless. Okay, the reincarnation was a strange path for Gavin, in my opinion. Yes, it was really strange. And Amy Newman asked Gavin exactly what I would have asked him. And we're going to get to that in just one minute. What's going on, Pixie Storms? Good to see you. Oh, uh, yeah, Randy, uh, sorry. All of my saved passwords uh, for the one Twitter account that I occasionally use just to message people uh, is on my old computer. And I haven't gotten on that thing in a good couple of weeks but i'll definitely get back on there i'll, I'll try to reach out to you uh, after the stream ends and yes i know what your twitter is yep okay bond is a little devil yes he is he might be your son pine points wait who got pine points let's see i do not think gavin even knew what he was talking about yeah we're gonna get into that in just one second uh Good, it makes me less late because I am usually late myself. Yes, it's bad when I'm late to my own stream. Gerstream's reviews are like Funyuns mixed with morning breath at 7 a.m. after a walk of shame from Shani's apartment. Not pleasant. Uh-huh. Whatever. Okay. All right, let's move along. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, what is up, Rebecca? <laughs> I saw that you got a kick out of my little comment in your stream earlier. I don't know why anytime Bob is there, I, I, <laughs> I just have to, I have to do a little bit of lighthearted yet humorous trolling. So that was fun. Anyway, uh, this is where Bonin is trying to earn his wrench again. Anyway, uh, what's going on, Carol? It is good to see you, Carol. And what is up, Rex? Rex Pillion, good to see you. Hey, what's going on, CJ? Oh, okay, so Corey got some pine points, huh? Okay, let's move along. Okay, so um, 
this is not a good way to start the stream since I was one late, two had def d difficult, but I can't even talk. Uh, some technical difficulties. I have to find the point, the the point or the part of the stream where they talked about reincarnation, which I thought was just like, what? <laughs> where are you going with this? Where are you going with this, brah? In reference to, oh, what the hell is his name? Gavin. Okay, so we're going to get right into this. Hey, uh, my internet connection has been a little cuckoo this past week, which thankfully it happens to be the one week I couldn't really stream all that much anyway, but I can stream today, I can stream tomorrow, and I might. And I am definitely going... Assuming I don't have any more freaking people show up to my my place of living. Okay. Let me test the audio first. Children, at a decent rate, were having memories of past lives. I, that should be something I think that could be testable. And I... Okay, so yeah, this is... Uh, I think this is the part... Uh, let me up the resolution just a little bit. Let's speed this bad boy up. Okay, so a bit of a backstory. Amy Newman is debating Gavin Hurleyman, uh, who goes by the hashtag here as Free the Gracers. The, the topic of the debate is Evidence for the Supernatural. It's on Praise I Am's channel. I will link that channel in the description box below in a little bit. I meant to do that before the stream, before everything went to fucking hell. <laughs> but there we are. Okay, so let me see. Let me just back this up a little bit, and we'll dig in. Also, I may open up the stream later. Uh, let me go ahead and type that in there. I may open this stream up later. Okay. Okay. Had to put that out there. Let's see. Okay. Oh, what's going on, BS Lewis? It is good to see you, BS. All right. Let's begin. If children at a decent rate were having memories of past lives, I f that should be something I think that could be testable. And I am skeptical of nightmare situations, dreams, nightmares, and stuff like that, because I actually think that an explanation I could easily put forward would be that nightmares, especially in children, have been probably happening for hundreds, thousands of years. I think, you know, for, for as long as we've had beds, there's probably been monsters under the beds and things like that. And it's easy for me to imagine that children could connect and create scenarios from a cultural perspective in which okay again sorry i don't know the exact moment of the main part i wanted to talk about on this debate but essentially gavin if i understand his pos his position correctly is saying that there's evidence for the supernatural and then he brought up a case of reincarnation um in which this child i think was five years old and he had all these memories that were the exact memories of a person who died in a plane crash or something of that nature. And so Amy Newman is basically saying, well, listen, uh, kids have wild imaginations. And when you have billions of kids on the planet, the odds are at least one of them, she didn't say this, but this is what I'm saying, at least one of them is going to have uh, an imagination, this this scenario or scenario they, they've generated from their mind uh, that's going to fit with somebody's demise from a previous, you know, generation. Um, but yeah, but the part that gets interesting, I believe, is coming up. They are going to have very similar nightmares. And so I would really want to know what it would illuminate, how we would be able to really say this is that person. Well, the details, the fine details of James's recollection as a toddler <clears throat> of his previous life that he experienced, leave no doubt that he's not making anything up. You know, he's, he's less than five years old. But, you know. Okay. <laughs> it, it gets better. <laughs> because 
you'll see soon enough where Gavin, or I should call him Gaff, Gaffin, uh, just completely contradicts himself. I don't know. It was really freaking strange. Um, because as Gavin's talking at this moment, it sounds like he is basically saying, hey, there's evidence of reincarnation, which is all of us have lived prior to the life that we have now in a previous generation. Maybe it was 100 years ago, maybe a couple thousand years ago, so on and so forth. So it sounds like James is presenting almost a, a doctrine of Hinduism. I believe it comes from Hinduism, uh, maybe Buddhism to some degree. But what's really odd is Gens, at least uh, the majority of them, do not believe in reincarnation. Reincarnation is not a doctrine that you will find in the Bible. You won't find any scriptural evidence for reincarnation. So it's very odd for a Christian to bring up a case of this alleged reincarnation. So, yeah. No, it's the name of the well, I would say thing. no offense to five-year-olds, but that's generally, I mean, that is, I mean, we have great creativities. I mean, when you're a kid, you're making things up all the time. Okay. He knew that um, Corsairs usually would get flat tires when they land. He knew that his plane was shot down by the Japanese. He knew that he flew off uh, a ship, and the ship's name was the USS Natoma Bay. Um uh, his nightmares were of a plane crash. Uh, bon, to answer your question, it sure as hell sounds like Gavin is arguing that a kid was reincarnated. But he does flip-flop on this a lot, and I hope it's coming up. ...on fire and sinking, and he was unable to get out. And the aircraft action report states that no wreckage or trace of the pilot was found. Um, James said that he flew a Corsair, and there's pictures of um, J.M. Huston with Corsairs and Squadron VF-301 interviews by J.M. Uh, Huston's father with veteran and son of veteran who, sa who served with Huston in the squadron. Um, young James said he died after being shot down in the Battle of Iwo Jima, and this is uh, verified by the History and Composite Squadron 81, VC81, and Aircraft Action Report. And he said to his mother, Mama, before I was born, I was a pilot, and my airplane got shot, shot in the engine, and it crashed into the water, and that's how I died. Uh, let's just think about that, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so a kid says, hey, Mom, I used to be an adult in a previous lifetime, and I was on an airplane, an aeroplane, mama. And the plane crashed into water. And what? You said somebody else died in a plane crash in the water? Wow, I must have been reincarnated. What great logic. Much impressed. Um, and so I do have to say, you you are putting forth the proposition that reincarnation does exist. No, no. I'm not. Okay, here it goes. This is the part. So up to this point, probably the past 10 minutes of this segment where I started it, is Gavin giving us a supposed case of reincarnation. And as he was doing that, before Amy even asked the question, so you believe in reincarnation, I was already asking that myself. I was like, wait, does Gavin believe in reincarnation? Uh, because that's not very Christ-like. That's not very Christian, bro. <laughs> so when, uh, when she, or when, when Amy, when she asked the question, so do you believe in reincarnation? Uh, that's, this is where it gets all kinds of crazy. Well, yeah, you'll see. Juma. And this is VC81, and even though I was a pilot, um, you are putting forth the proposition that reincarnation does exist. No, no, I'm not putting forward uh, uh, evidence for reincarnation at all. So what, so what do you... Okay, I'm going to let Amy finish her point here in just a moment, but <laughs> did anybody catch that? Gavin, yes, this child has memories of a previous lifetime, and you can read about it 
in this uh, journal or whatever you want to call it, this paper that's called The Case of James Leninger, an American Case of the Reincarnation Type. And after hammering that point home about how, oh, this kid, they're saying he must have been reincarnated. Amy says, okay, so Gavin, you believe in reincarnation? And he goes, no, I don't believe in reincarnation. Then why the hell are you bringing up a case, a supposed case of reincarnation? Like, and I, I'm not throwing, I'm not being hateful towards Gavin. He's been nice to me. I will return in kind, like I said at the beginning. But come on, dude. You're flip-flopping. Shit, shot in the engine, and it crashed into the wood, and that's how I died. Um, and so I do have to say, you you are putting forth the proposition that reincarnation does exist. No, no, I'm not putting forward uh, no, of uh, evidence for reincarnation at all. So what, so what do you think this is? This is... Um, this is referred to as uh, memories of a previous life. Memories of a previous life, but yeah. they are not actually from the person. So they never were the other person. They're just getting memories from a person who's dead. Yeah. <laughs> this is somebody under, under five years of age who knows yeah, we get uh, details <laughs> Of something he would never know about. Uh, damn it, my internet is lagging. I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Okay. So, <laughs> Gavin is like, yeah, there's evidence of reincarnation. Look at this case here. Amy says, okay, so you believe in reincarnation? And <laughs> Gavin says, no, of course not. I'm not even talking about reincarnation even though it's in the freaking title of the paper that he's reading from. <laughs> okay, I'm going to let my internet connection get back up to speed before I continue the video. That way it's not lagging. Um, so I'm just going to say hello to the comments. Icarus, hi, fake weather report gang. Hey, hey, hey. Icarus, I am the leader of the pudding gang. Don't let anybody tell you different. Look at me. I'm the captain now. Yeah, he's not communicating clearly. Yes, Gavin is not. No, not at all. Uh, let's see what else. Yes. Okay, Bond. Bond, there might be hope for you, Bond. You're actually pick you're picking up what I'm putting down, bro. Okay, Pixie Storm says, maybe Gavin is just trying to prove the supernatural that some connection to some sort of afterlife exists. I don't know. I didn't finish this portion. At least I don't think I did. Hopefully he clarifies. And then Pixie goes on. But his inability to articulate such, to articulate such, makes me think I am being overly generous. And you probably are. <laughs> that could be another thing, Rex. Girl, the angels told the boy, don't you know? All right, if my internet connection could get back up to speed, that would be freaking great so we can continue this atrocity. Okay. Um, all right, well, I'm just going to play the video. I'm sorry that it's going to lag. It should pick back up at some point. If I am roboting, please let me know. And with that said, let's continue. Yeah, as an under five-year-old. So... Where do you think that this is coming from? How does this happen? Um, I've already read that to you. Do you want me to read it again? I, sure. I, I didn't hear. I, in fact, my big word where I'd love to is logistics. I think the supernatural, the paranormal, I think they suffer greatly from them. So I would love to know, how is this working? Okay. So the documentation in James's case provides evidence that he had a connection with a life from the past. On the face of it, the most obvious explanation for this connection is that he experienced a life as J.M. Huston Jr. before having his current life. Before Can I stop? Having his current Can I life. Ask you, please? Because that does sound. All right. <clears throat> Let me try something here. One second. I'm going to see if this makes it any better. Let me just do this little thing here. Okay. I'm going to do this thing here. Okay. I'm trying to get the video back on track. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. We're going to see if this makes a difference. Hopefully it makes a good difference. All right, so we're gonna go to share the screen again. Gonna go to the Chrome tab. Here we are. Okay. Let's see if this is any better. I will back it up just a hair. Uh, let's go here. Okay, here we go. Of two is logistics. I think the supernatural, the paranormal, I think they suffer greatly from them. So I would love to know, how is this working? Okay, so the documentation in James's case provides evidence that he had a connection with a life from the past. On the face of it, the most obvious explanation for this connection is that he experienced a life as J.M. Huston Jr. before having his current life. Okay, so there we go. So Gavin is saying, yes, kid has memories of a life that was not his current life. But I'm not supporting the idea of reincarnation. I'm not even talking about reincarnation. Bro. <laughs> like, come on, dude. If you're not supporting reincarnation, then what in reincarnation are you talking about? Like, maybe he clarifies this point at some point. I don't know. But it's just, so I'm not saying that reincarnation is a thing, but I'm saying that we have a thing that looks like reincarnation. Okay, well, if it's not reincarnation, then what the hell is it? <laughs> oh, bread of life. <laughs> bread of life, Rebecca, I don't know if you're joking or not, but I did make that joke to myself because I amuse myself because I'm so funny. When I was watching this debate, I was like, oh, I bet you Gavin is going to say, okay, it's not reincarnation, <laughs> it's demons. Because uh, there is, I remember hearing about a case, and it may have been this very case on TV one time when I was a kid. And I said, mom, this kid has memories from a different person before he was even born. Does that mean reincarnation is real? And my mom was like, well, you see, little girl, um, it's not that reincarnation is real. It's called familiar spirits. I don't remember what exactly familiar spirits are. It's been a long time since I was a young little Christian boy. But it's something along the lines of demons can Im implant fake memories from another person into you or something along those lines. Uh, okay, <laughs> sorry, sorry to crap on you, Rebecca. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, I maybe Gavin will will get to this point. Maybe Gavin will say, "Yeah, it's not reincarnation. It it's not reincarnation. It's demons." Amy, 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 what don't you know? It's it's not reincarnation. It's demons. <laughs> okay. All right, let's continue. <laughs> Austin Jr. before having his current life. Can I stop? Can I question, life. please? Because that does sound like you just said he is from his previous life. That sounds like reincarnation. Uh-huh. Well, you can call it reincarnation if you like, but that's not what it is. That's not well, what it is. Then what is it? Walk me through. What is your definition of reincarnation? I don't ever think about reincarnation. You see, <laughs> you see what's going on? I'm not even, I don't even think about reincarnation. I'm not even talking about reincarnation, even though I'm talking about um, reincarnation. Like, come on, Gavin. <laughs> reincarnation. I don't ever think about reincarnation. Well, so, okay. What do you carry think on? other people's definition of reincarnation is? I've got no idea. I don't think about reincarnation. Okay. So can, can, we, can we move off of reincarnation and can I... Can I... Yeah, but Gavin, you were the one who brought up reincarnation. If I remember this correctly, Amy didn't bring up reincarnation. It came from Gavin. I could be mistaken. And even if Amy was the one who originally brought up reincarnation, 
Um, Gavin had a source ready and good to go, had a slide about a paper titled that, that had the title reincarnation in it. <laughs> Come on, Gavin. Come on, bro. <laughs> oh, and I must say, I think Amy Newman, as per usual, knocked this debate out of the park. <laughs> okay. So can, can, we move, can we move off of reincarnation and can I can I continue? Can I just say why I can't? That paper literally has incarnation in the title. And so I, I don't I think that is literally the topic when we're talking about the paper. Ah, damn it, the video is lagging again. Hold on two seconds. Let me just do a thing. This might this might help, maybe. Okay. One second. All right, we're going to go here. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Okay. I don't like StreamYard hates it when I share videos. I When I share the screen, StreamYard just hates that shit. And so I, I don't, I think that is literally the topic when we're talking about the paper. I don't think so. I don't, I don't. Of the paper that you're getting your information from. So, Gavin, if the paper that you're citing about reincarnation, if it's not your view that it was reincarnation, then what what is your point? What are you trying to say? I think reincarnation is a, is a real thing. Oh, sorry. I think so. I don't I don't think reincarnation is a, is a real thing. So. I, mean, I, agree uh, with you. I love Amy's face there. She, you can just tell she's like, uh, what the fuck? <laughs> the, fa the facts in the case indicate that this explanation wants serious consideration. So for their conclusion, they say, numerous cases of children who report memories of previous lives have been studied over the last 50 years. The idea that they are created through normal means by social and cultural factors is challenged by cases in the West, particularly ones with good documentation, such as James's case described here. The nightmares and post-traumatic play that James experienced were typical of behaviours, typical of the behaviours, sorry, many of these children display demonstrate how difficult apparent past life memories can be for children to have. An understanding of the link between the apparent memories and the emotional and behavioural issues these children experience may be helpful to families, particularly in situations in which the parents are inclined to hand wave or dismiss the possibility of a past life connection. Awareness of cases such as James's, ones with documentation, of course. Again, Gavin, what is your point? Bro, bro. <laughs> this is a bit more fun than I thought it would be. I'm not going to lie. Agreement between events from a life in the past and memories a current child expresses may lead parents to be less likely to discount their child children's reports and more able to help them through the experience. So, so there you go. Okay. But I just want to re reiterate. I think what that article is saying is that, that these children appear to have a connection of a past life. I'm skeptical of it, but that is what that's saying of previous lives and that this challenges the normal means by which we may uh, they may know something. But what I would then say is the correct answer and tell me why I'm wrong is – I don't know. It's not that this is evidence for the supernatural. It's not that they're even saying how that this happens. They are just saying, uh, I don't know, and it's possible, and uh, it, we don't know why. They are you see, Amy, as per usual, is being a sensible, reasonable human being, okay? Because like, it's like, okay, so for the sake of argument, let's just say, okay, there's this case where this kid has very specific memories of something he's never gone through. Um, okay, so you're saying that it's not reincarnation, and I agree. 
I don't believe in reincarnation either. So, but if it does appear to be the case, uh, a case for reincarnation, and let's just say the evidence is pretty good. Like he, he knew the pilots, I don't, I don't know, the, the, the license to fly the plane, he knew the plane number, all that stuff. I don't know if, if airplanes have VIN numbers, but let's just say that for the sake of argument. The most any of us can do with half a brain would, would be to say, well, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. It's okay to not know the answer to a question, but it's not okay to make up an answer and say, that's the reason. You know what I'm saying? Am I making sense up in here? Okay. Uh, Bread of Life, stick around. Uh, I just want to get a few more minutes into this, and then I will let you in. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there are able to make those explanations. I actually think saying I don't know is the valid answer. So why is I don't know the right one? I hardly think the conclusion is I don't know. I hardly think that at all. Um, of course you think I don't know is not a good answer. Because as a Christian, anytime we don't know the exact answer to a question, we must insert God. We must insert God did it. So the supernatural is real. Therefore, I win the debate. The supernatural exists. This is this is a, a paragraph that they write about children who report memories of, of previous lives from DOPS. Some young people, some young people, usually between the ages of two and five, speak about memories ah, of a previous... Damn it, it is lagging again. Son of a bitch. Uh, hold on, hold on one second. <sighs> Why does God hate me so much? <laughs> why does he why does God hate me so much that he has to mess up my streams? <laughs> okay. All right. And uh Rebecca, if you can stick around, I will let you in in just a moment. I appreciate you accepting my offer. These of a previous usually between the ages of two and five, speak about memories of a previous life they claim to have lived. At the same time, they often show behaviors such as phobias or preferences that are unusual within the context of their particular family and cannot be explained by any current life events. These memories appear to be concordant with the child's statement about a previous life. Okay, so... The answer is not reincarnation, as per Gavin, and also as per Amy Newman. So the answer is what? <laughs> like, just Gavin, for the love of God, just tell us what is the answer according to you, bro? And this was demonstrated in the case of James Lineker. The details that he was able to convey as an under five-year-old no, no under five-year-old would know them. There'd be no way for him to know them. So you say there'd be no way, but we don't even know how. You're just, I mean, it would be you're saying above the laws of nature, but we don't actually have a mechanism. And I, I still am highly skeptical. We can call it whatever we want, but of a previous life, of anyone having a previous life ever. Yeah, well, like, um, like that one guy said, the supernatural, the hypernatural, or the psi phenomena exist as, fact, as a fact of nature. And the sooner science no. comes to grips with that fact, so in science is going to have to come to grips with that fact somehow. Well, let's, let's go towards a similar subject. Um, you brought up the hard problem of consciousness. I just want to know what, you, uh, what would be your version or what is the definition of the hard problem of consciousness? Um, the hard problem of consciousness is Okay, so that was the main part of the debate I wanted to highlight. Was, again, Gavin using an example of supposed reincarnation one second, and then the next second saying, no, I don't believe in reincarnation. I'm not even talking about it. It's like, what? Dude. Uh, and, and like, be honest. Am I strawmanning Gavin? I don't think I am. He's literally talking about reincarnation in one breath, 
And then in the next breath saying, he's not talking about reincarnation at all. So like, <laughs> Gavin, what is it? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, hold on one second. Let me put this out for Bread of Life. Okay. 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 Bread of Life, the link, the StreamYard link is in the side chat. And I will not let anybody in, only Rebecca, a.k.a. Bread of Life. So if you try to join, I will not let you in. No hate. No shade, bro. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, let me see here. Let me go ahead and delete that comment <laughs> so nobody gets any ideas. Okay. All right. And now, oops. Okay. Hello, Rebecca. Hi. How Hi. are you, girl? I am doing good. Uh, I had some technical issues right before I started the stream. And so it wouldn't let me start it. Uh, I don't know what that was about. Anyways. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's always a pleasure talking with you, Rebecca. Especially when it's not a bunch of, uh, you know, a bunch of like 10 different atheists in the room all like having it out for you. <laughs> well, I think that's fun too. I enjoy that. Well, that, that's, that's fair. I, I do respect that you will go into a room full of atheists and state your case even if your case is obvious. Oh, you cut out. I didn't. <laughs> oh, I... Maybe God didn't want you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> He's on to me. No, I was saying uh, I like and respect that you will go into a room full of atheists and state your case, even though you're wrong, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. So, uh, go ahead, so no, I was it. I I never heard him clearly state what he thinks is going on in this. Did did as the debate goes on, did they talk about that situation um, anymore? Let me see. Oh, I gotta share the screen. I guess that would help. <laughs> oh, I have to. Oh. Hold on one second. Okay, here we go. Um, we'll see. The current thinking is that the 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 brain the physical brain organ acts as okay, a filter yeah. for the mind. I I don't think that he ever defines what he's talking about. I don't think he clarified because um, now they're talking about the you know consciousness or the hard problem of consciousness, and maybe they get back into it. I didn't watch the whole debate. I watched probably well, probably watched forty five minutes of it give or take. And when I started watching it, it was probably 10 minutes before they started talking about reincarnation. And when that started, I was like, okay, I've got to do a stream about this. This is rich because I know Christians, uh, most of them, if I would say at least 99% of them do not believe in reincarnation in the same way that really anyone who subscribes to reincarnation does. Like right. Re reincarnation you, you will not find at least not to my knowledge any scriptural backing for that position um but out of curiosity since you're here where do you stand on reincarnation oh yeah of course i don't believe in reincarnation it's not christianity at all um you know i don't i don't see that idea anywhere in scripture and it's clearly not orthodox christianity to believe in reincarnation um, although, you know, um, B.S. Lewis just asked me about uh, John chapter nine, verse two, um, and, at, and he listed this as support in the scripture for reincarnation. So there's a blind guy and mm -hmm. um, like the disciples asked Jesus, Rabbi, who sinned this man or his parents that he was born blind? And so, um, you know, B.S. Lewis says, oh, sorry, go, think, ahead. go ahead. Oh, no, I, I was uh, I was just going to say, uh, to my understanding, uh, if I remember this correctly, what Jesus answered was it was 
not of his sin, but of the sins of his forefathers or something of that nature. Or, and again, I know Jesus speaks in parables, so I'm not saying that's exactly what he meant, but continue. Yeah. Well, actually, Jesus said, no, it it wasn't his sin or his parents' sin, but oh, okay. so that, you know, God may be glorified, um, you know, and then, you know, of course, he was healed. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, Jesus did not affirm that it was because of sin that he was blind. Um, That's right. That's right. I, I retract what I just said. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, but basically... Um, you know, the, the point that B.S. Lewis was making was, well, um, you know, how could if why would they ask him who sinned this man or his parents that he was born blind? If, you know, like, how could he have sinned before he was born unless they believed in reincarnation? Mm. <clears throat> yeah. So, hmm. And I just told B.S. Lewis, and this really is my answer. I think that's reading way too much into the question. I mean, <laughs> I've read that, I don't know, a hundred times at least. And I never like put reincarnation into it or anything like that. I mean, the question always made sense to me without thinking um, in terms of reincarnation. I, I finally found the comment I think you're referencing uh, when yeah. Rebecca gets on, ask her about John 9, 2 and the implications of reincarnation by Jesus' disciples. Pretty please. Well, <clears throat> I know I'm late to highlight that, but I think you just answered that. <laughs> I mean, did you, Gert, I mean, when you when you read that question, does it to you seem like it's, you know, like it, implying reincarnation? Um, it, it When I read the verse, no. Or at least when I had read that verse and... I've read the Gospels, you know, a couple times over, <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, but I, I never took anything Jesus said as support of reincarnation or even implied it, in, in my opinion. I just don't see it. Um, and the, the verse, John 9, uh, 2, or chapter and verse, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that was just about, like you said, they asked him, Jesus, you know, what, was this person blind because of his sin or because of somebody else's sin? And Jesus said, well, no, it's so that the glory of God can be demonstrated. Um, so, I, yeah, I don't see anything about reincarnation there. So mm -hmm. sorry, B.S. Lewis, you're just wrong, bro. <laughs> OK, here it goes. Why did they think that a blind man's sin would cause him to be blind from birth? Well, I think that's a different question, but that's a good question, though, Rebecca. I mean, it, again, I think this is just overthinking it. I don't think um, the question like was specifically like tying the blindness to something previous to his birth. Um, I think it was just, hey, it was basically asking, why is this guy blind? Um, so, um, well, yeah. I I would like to answer Tom Tom's question. What is wrong with reincarnation? And the answer to that is there's no evidence for it or no good evidence for it at minimum. So, yeah. And I think Rebecca would agree with that because you don't believe in reincarnation. So if there was evidence, like solid evidence for reincarnation, uh, then I would have to really consider that and reflect. And I'm sure you'd probably do the same. Well, I, I would say that some of the cases, um, you know, it could point to reincarnation. Um, so like the one that was mentioned, um, you know, and other uh, studies, and I'm not going to be able to list them <clears throat> off the top of my head. But, you know, there have been yeah. people that have had what they experience as memories of a past life. So I think that, you know, deserves some explanation. Um, I wouldn't call it strong evidence for reincarnation, but I would say it's like something that might make us, you know, consider where this experience is coming from. Well, <clears throat> before I started streaming, uh, at least regularly on YouTube, I did meet this this guy who was a who is a Hindu and believes in reincarnation and all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask him some questions uh 
but since I was not in the actual stream, the panel, I was only in the side chat. I could only ask there and it, you know, there's too many comments, so he didn't see it. Mm -hmm. But my question is if reincarnation is an actual thing at uh, who is an original person here as in who was here that has never been here before, like their, their mm -hmm. essence, if you will, because there's, you know, what, 7 billion people on the planet. Mm -hmm. All are all of them former humans or insects or, <laughs> you know, other types of creatures, because it, it, like at what point is a new soul injected into the in, into life onto the planet? You know, mm -hmm. that would be my question if it was a real thing. And yeah, I don't know. I just reincarnation like. It, it, it doesn't even sound like a good thing. It doesn't even sound like good wishful thinking to me because if I lived a previous life, say a thousand years ago, and I have no memories of that, well, that's stupid. That's not even something that I hope is true. <laughs> you know? Right. Now I, now I would like to hope in, in, I do have wishful thinking that there's an afterlife. Uh, but that wouldn't, that would make me feel better. Like, you know, be like, oh, this is great. I get to live on. Now, I don't think I'd want to live for eternity. That sounds terrifying, no matter how fancy the place is. But the thought <laughs> of never having your consciousness uh, rest or die, that to me, that's scary. But it is a little bit frightening, isn't it? It is. <clears throat> I remember when I was a kid, we would always go to Burger King on Sunday mm -hmm. nights to meet up with fellow homeschooled families and uh, Christians of different denominations. And we'd always just, uh, the parents would sit around talking about who knows what. And then me and the rest of the kids would be outside on the playground eating our chicken nuggets and drinking our Coca-Colas and running around and sliding down the slides. Mm -hmm. And then one day it hit me. I was like, wait a second. Could you imagine doing this for eternity? Just an eternity of all this, you know, fun, go lucky time. And even as a kid, the reality of such a notion was kind of scary. I was like, ooh, that, just think about that. Uh, so I'd, I'd still be doing this a thousand years from now, a billion years from now, 10, you know, a Googleplex amount of years from now. That sounds terrifying and it would never end. So it'd be, you know, beyond all that. And even as a kid, that thought was scary. And I would even think about, well, let's just say, for the sake of this hypothetical, that hell is actually this big comfy bed that you lay in for eternity. And I thought, that sounds terrible as well. <laughs> you know, that just, God, I'm awful. Anyways, I'm rambling. <laughs> yeah, well, I wonder if um, one of the things that makes those thoughts scary is like the boredom that comes with this like mortal life. Like, like not only, I mean, there's horrible evils, there's horrible corruption <clears throat> and things, but there's also like, you know, a mundane there there's like m the mundane in life. And so maybe it's that mundane aspect of life that makes eternity feel scary yeah and, and i would agree with that <clears throat> because again I, I i you know i like the thought of living on after i die i like the thought of still being conscious after death but in a place that's you know warm and fuzzy feelings and all that but mm -hmm. then when it comes to never ever actually dying that is just that's frightening. Now, don't get me wrong. If I was presented with the option of either eternal agony forever, which I know you don't subscribe to that, but I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. uh, if I was pr presented with the option of either eternal agony or eternal bliss, I would obviously go with eternal bliss. But I feel like even that would come to a point to where that would be unbearable. At least in my current physical mm -hmm. human nature uh, state of mind. <laughs> Now, what about just the idea of your life ending now? Because you said you still have a hopeful idea about the afterlife. So does this life seem too short? Oh, yeah. This life, I feel like human life is way too short. 
maybe that's just because I like life. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, if I had the option and I could just push a button, I would prefer to live at least 200 more years. Uh, if the option was a thousand, uh, I might would push that button. But at the same time, if the world is being burnt up or if, if life just becomes this dystopia wasteland, I wouldn't want to be alive for that. <laughs> you know? Okay, but let's imagine that you're in like a blissful place, you know, no, nothing bad. Then when you came to the end of your, you know, thousand years, mm -hmm. do you think you'd push the button again? Oh, I probably would. Because <laughs> it, it would almost be like, you can either you can either live another thousand years or you can kill yourself is essentially what that would be. And I think I would always choose life over death for my unless I was like about to be like tortured or something. Um, yeah. But yeah. I, no, you know, you know, what's weird to me is, um, you know, some people say they prefer eternal torment to annihilation like i don't yeah, know if so you know <laughs> i don't know if you know so chris date but you know he's like the he's bit done a lot of work on annihilation and you know he's an annihilationist but mm. oh you know he's basically become an expert on you know this concept of is eternal conscious torment in the bible and he's really good so of course he doesn't believe in eternal conscious torment but he says actually annihilation sounds scarier to him than eternal conscious torment and i just think that's so weird i'd rather be annihilated than tortured I, I think, for like 30 minutes i i think what he's trying to do and i'm just mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know uh failing to do this but i'm psychoanalyzing him and I think what he's trying to say is, you know, really, uh, annihilation is so much worse than the hell that most Christians preach to you. And I, I think he's just trying to, like, psychologically, that eternal agony is worse than what he believes, which is annihilation. I, I, I could be wrong, but that's what I think. Um, I do know mm. uh, my dad has told me one time. Uh, he said, you know, if there is no God and I just die and and there goes all my memories, that that does sound kind of scarier than than burning forever. And I I, yeah. I get the idea because nobody like nobody wants to just have their memories zapped and they cease to live. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is a scary thought. And it's a thought that I deal with and I'm sure many people deal with uh, on a nearly daily basis but that's just the way it is as far as I can tell. And I, and again, I would rather be annihilated than face eternal agony. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, I think that's somebody just trying to, you know, convince themselves that annihilation is worse because that's what they believe. And they won't, I, I feel like each, maybe not you, but I feel like a lot of Christians won't, whatever the punishment is for sinners and the afterlife, I feel like they want it to be the worst possible case. At least that seems to be the case. <laughs> you know what, girl? I've noticed that. It's a, it's very bizarre to me. Like, how, why do you want people to have, like, the worst possible thing? To me, it's, like, very, it's quite unchristian, actually, yeah. to, like, want <laughs> the worst for people, you know? So it's. I, I find it bizarre when Christians think that way, but I have encountered that where like, oh, you're just going to burn and, you know, right. <laughs> like, I don't know. So it, it is, it is very odd. And, you know, when it, like, I know when it comes to like, I know as I, uh, the last maybe three years of my Christian life, I started to lean towards Christian universalism, mm -hmm. not not the universalism, which is, you know, everybody just goes to heaven. But the part right. that says the, the the concept that says Jesus died so that all not only can, but will go to heaven. They may have to face some corrective punishment through the lake of fire, but everybody ends up in heaven, even Hitler, uh, mm -hmm. after their punishments are dealt with and they are forgiven through Christ. I started to lean towards that way. Mm. And anytime I would debate my fellow Christians on this doctrine, because they were all eternal agony. 
Uh, I don't think I, I don't think I know or knew anyone who believed in annihilation. Uh, mm -hmm. But I would finally just say, okay, well, do you at least hope that I'm right? And they would all tell me the same thing. No, I don't hope that you're right. I'm like, so you want sinners to be burning forever? Like, that's what you want. <laughs> and in hindsight, it's like, wow, I knew some wackos. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny because on one of my hell videos, like the first hell video I made, oh my goodness, the uproar, um, you know, the <laughs> Christian outrage at my video, um, you know, that was kind of saying hell is not eternal torment, you know. I saw that. that. I like that one. The outrage was just astounding. And, and you know, some atheist came on there and was like defending me in the comments. And, <laughs> you know, he said something like, do you people realize how long eternity is? <laughs> right. You scare me. You <laughs> effing scare me. <laughs> you know, like, you know, yeah. I have a video on my main channel, the Grown Up Germania channel, uh, yeah. where I talk about the different concepts and different doctrines of hell. And mm -hmm. I do bring up at some point annihilationism and and even in that video, I said, I will grant that that's a far more merciful view of, of God. Uh, I still don't believe it, but, you know, at least mm -hmm. God's not, you know, casting people into a lake of fire. Well, they were just suffer for eternity. Like, at least it's better than that option. Anything's better mm -hmm. than that option, you know. <laughs> and I, I, I feel like I think I think one reason and I could be wrong. I think there's some sort of subconscious reason that so many Christians uh, think that eternal agony is more preferable. It's because they think that atheists and Christians that are weak in their faith will say, oh, well, you know what? I can do what I want, and at least I don't have to pay for it for eternity. I think that's what it is. It's very shallow, very stupid, but I, I think that's probably the case, at least for some Christians. Well, see, I think most Christians believe in hell as eternal conscious torment because of what they read in the Bible. They open it up. They see the word hell. We have a concept of what that word means. Mm -hmm. And so they, you know, they feel like people like me are just ignoring the Bible. And, you know. Well, yeah, that too, I guess. They, I, I can see why they'd feel that way. So, I mean, and if you don't look deeper into it, if you don't look into, well, what was actually being said there, mm -hmm. um, you know, y you, you can come away with that idea. But I mean, it, oh. there is just this idea of eternal conscious torment really is not in the Bible. It's, it's a terrible idea. And I, I feel bad that Christians believe it. Um, but I do think most believe it because that is they believe what the Bible, what they think the Bible is saying. Yeah. And, and to be fair to them, uh, even though I'm not supporting their position at all, mm -hmm. I, I definitely understand how anyone can read the Bible in modern times, like within the last couple hundred years and see and conclude, okay, yeah, this book, right or wrong, uh, says that if you don't believe in Christ, when you die, the smoke of your torment will ascend forever and ever. And I know there's some there's some words used there that don't necessarily mean what they have been translated to say. Because um, like when it comes to, uh, I think it was, I think the word is aeon. Um, when it says mm -hmm. the smoke of the torment will ascend for aeons and aeons. Um, I think that's the word. I think it's uh, ionion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ionion. Okay. I know it was one of those mm -hmm. weird sounding yeah. words. Um, yeah. It doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. mean forever. Mm -hmm. um, and it can mean Right. Yes. Uh, like, and I think it's Young's literal translation and a couple others. It says for ages and ages, not uh, denoting uh, like th no correlation between ages and eternity. Two very different things. Well, now it, that same word is used to describe eternal life. So, you know, oh. maybe that makes it less scary for you if you think of life into the ages is that less scary than yeah it's a little less scary i'll tell you anything <laughs> that's not eternal suffering is less scary than anything else well what i mean is you 
you were saying that no, I know living that eternally forever. is scary. Even if you're, you know, have a comfortable eternity, living right. in e for eternity is scary. But, you know, if you think about it, life into the ages, that might make it, you know, <laughs> yeah. a little, little bit more scary. appeasing, I guess. Um, so how do you get around those verses where it talks about the smoke of the torment will ascend forever and ever? Okay. Now, the that verse and, okay, if you if you look throughout the Bible, okay, it, it, it really depends. Let me just give a small summary because mm -hmm. that to get to that verse, I want to just give a good case against hell from the other verses. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how many times the word hell appears in the Bible depends on which translation you read. If you yes. read King James, it's 54 times. If you read NIV, it's 13 times. And if you read some English translations, I have found 13 English translations that do not have the word hell anywhere in the Bible. Mm, I believe so. It. There are four words that have been translated as hell. Okay. Mm. None of those words actually mean this fiery underworld where people are tormented forever. Right. So, in my opinion, those 13 translations that don't have hell are the ones that we should pay attention to. And, yeah. and they're not all new translations. Some of them are from hundreds of years ago. Yeah. So, I mean, this isn't a new thing that people are just suddenly making up and wanting to take hell out of the Bible. No, right. it's the concept actually does not fit. Okay, so we have some imagery of judgment. We have some imagery of judgment by fire um, in the Bible, but there's only two verses, and you mentioned one of them mm -hmm. to me that could support eternal conscious torment. And so the one you said is from Revelation, mm -hmm. right? And it's yeah. the, the, yeah, the smoke of their I forget torment. I the exact verse, but yeah, it's in Goes up, yep, yeah, forever and ever. Now, <clears throat> if anybody wants an in-depth thing on this, Chris Date, who is an expert, came on my channel recently, and I asked him this question because I, whenever I present this to people about, you know, there's no uh, good evidence for hell, I always mm -hmm. do caveat it with, there's two verses in Revelation that could be used to support eternal conscious torment. But Revelation is a book full of metaphor, full of symbolism. Like, you know, we don't take our ideas about things in general from Revelation and say, this is the way it is. I mean, in Revelation, Jesus has a big sword coming out of his mouth, <laughs> right? you know, yeah. and most of us don't think we're going to have to like duck when we, you know, go <laughs> give Jesus a hug in heaven, right? right? Like, mm -hmm. so we do not take Revelation literally. So why are we going to take two verses in Revelation and and ignore and like that's a good make, point make those two verses um how we understand the afterlife when we have actually hundreds of verses in the bible that tell us very clearly that the contrast um between the righteous and the wicked that is death versus life mm -hmm. so you've got um you know like 90 something verses in the new testament that talk about the afterlife in terms of death versus life eternal life or perishing or death or destruction and throughout the old testament too that's what you have you've got over and over again hundreds tons of verses i don't know if hundreds in mm -hmm. the Old Testament, but there's there's so many verses that describe the destiny of the wicked as death. Mm -hmm. So why would we ignore hundreds of verses in the Bible <laughs> that describe the afterlife as life versus death or destruction, you know, versus mm -hmm. life? Um, and then take two verses from this revelation, which is so symbolic, and make those how we figure out the afterlife. To yeah. me, that that makes no sense, right? And I agree. Chris Chris Date um, does a really. I mean, I don't I'm not going to explain it as well as him, but the way he talks about that um, those verses in Revelation, he said, you know, whenever we have the Bible, we have like, I mean, people interpreting dreams and visions, which is what Revelation is. They always start with the symbol of the dream, and then they describe the reality. So mm. 
those verses that are describing in Revelation, that's those are the symbols describing the reality of the second death. And it even says um, he will throw them into the lake of fire, which is the second death. Mm -hmm. OK, and so but even even in Revelation, Hades and um, death are thrown into the lake right. of fire. So, yes. um, you know, basically they're destroyed as well. So anyway, it just but if you try to build your afterlife on a couple verses in Revelation, that's to me, that's a, a huge error. I, I, I agree because, you know, anytime like a progressive Christian says the Bible is it's just metaphors. It's just it's all poetical, you know, allegories. I'm thinking, well, Revelation definitely is. But I wouldn't say that about the entire Bible. Um, right. But I, I do think, as far as I can tell, Genesis seems to be pretty straightforward. But in Revelation, at, at least in the King James Bible, it literally says that the angel uh, signified the things to come, which which basically means speaking in 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 uh, basically like metaphors. Right. And like you said, when it says that death and hell or Hades were cast into the lake of fire. It doesn't mean there's this literal deity called death and this literal deity called Hades that's going to get cast into the lake of fire. I mean, it's, it's very obvious, a uh, book of metaphors. And I, 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 I don't understand why so many, it seems to me so many Christians take revelation as so straightforward when it's clearly not. It even says that it's not when it talks about, at least in the one version that I saw it, where it, it says the angel uh, signified these things. I can't remember the exact verse and in in how it was phrased. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the definition of the word that was used, it, it, it clearly meant, ironically, speaking in metaphors and signs and yeah. symbols. Uh, but I will right. say this. Uh, me personally, as an outspoken atheist, I like it when Christians take revelation so literally because it's so much fun to poke at <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's well like, and it, uh, it's my little sandbox i can play in <laughs> oh my goodness yeah you know what i i mean i wanted to ask you about so christian universalism because i i i mean i i don't know that i've given it a fair hearing um i think there is some support for it um but I definitely think it is a, I, I like Christian universalists because they're very kind and compassionate, mm. but what were your reasons for um, embracing that view? Like what would, what were the things from scripture that convinced you of that view? Or was there another reason that you were convinced of that? Well, um, hopefully I'm not roboting. It says my internet connection is lagging a little bit. Okay. Uh, You're okay. Okay. Just went back up. Huh, okay, great. It must be God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> no, um, I, I think what it, uh, what got me uh, into that doctrine was, one, I didn't know it was an actual thing. Um, but I, uh, me, since I was under the impression that OSAS is not a real thing, like once you're saved, you're not always saved. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, that thought really terrified me because as a Christian, I was always thinking, oh, man, I'm going to mess up today. Before I can get God's forgiveness, I'm going to be damned for all eternity. And so mm. I really started to look into OSAS. And, uh, and then I came across a couple websites of Christian universalists. Uh, some making that case that OSAS is true and some saying it's not true, which it might be kind of complicated to get that. But basically, to put it simply, it's okay. If you live a life, if you're a Christian and you live a sinful life, well, you'll still face wrath and punishment, but it's corrective. It's, it's not punishment for punishment's sake. And um, so what really started to, to get my gears turning was, as you said, there's four different words. I think there's one in the Old Testament and three in the New Testament that all get translated yep. into hell. Mm -hmm. Once I realized that, I was like, wow, okay, so I can go ahead and ignore this, this idea of, of hell, at least as I have understood it to be. 
And then I would see it, people, these Christians would bring up verses like, well, it says, um, uh, what was it? Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And, you know, God's all loving. So, of course, God's not going to send all of his creation to burn forever or for a, a, a temporary point and then cease to exist. And uh, and it says, you know, through man or through Adam, man has fallen, but through Christ, all will be risen. And you could take that mm -hmm. to mean a couple of things. But uh, so I just thought, OK, maybe maybe Christian universalism is true. Maybe it can be backed up uh, biblically. And well, I started to lean towards that way and it did make me happier. I, it definitely took a lot of weight off of my shoulders uh, the first couple of months. And then before long, I was just like, you know, I don't think any of this stuff is true. <laughs> mm. But what really got me into it was how hell has been just horribly mistranslated. That was the main thing. And then from there, I started to think, okay, maybe Christian universalism is true. And then from there, I was like, no, nah, I don't think any of this is true. I guess once that first domino got pushed, it just was this chain reaction that finally led to me saying, you know what? It's not that I don't want to believe in God. It's just, I can't, like, I just mm. I can't do it. I've tried. And I may have told you this before, but there was a time where I said, okay, God, I don't know if you're listening. I don't even know if you exist. I don't know if you're the God of the Bible or some other religion, or if you have not made, made yourself known to anyone through any religion. But if, if there is a deity out there that's listening and can grant this prayer, if you could just have somebody tell me these three or four different words in this order, it can't come through a dream to me. Like somebody else can dream it and then tell it to me, but it can't mm -hmm. come from my dream because whatever happens in my dreams comes from my brain anyway. So it wouldn't, mm -hmm. that would be cheating. So I said, if you're real, please let somebody say these words to me. And then I'll know, I won't know what God you are, what, religion you represent if any but at least i'll know that you're out there mm. um and you know that could maybe one day somebody will say these words although that would be really strange i'd be like well now i'm more confused which god is it <laughs> i'm sorry i don't remember how i got on that topic, yeah <laughs> no you told me that before i'm really i'm i'm, I'm fascinated i so um do you like you don't think you'll ever forget those words like did you like like really put them in your mind so you'll never forget them? Yes, yes, I, I did. And um, there's just no way that anybody would know it, I don't think. And it's, it's not like these, you know, ancient words or anything like that. It's just a couple of words uh, strung together in a way where somebody would be like, hey, girl, I don't know why I'm thinking of this, but blah, 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 blah. I'd be like, wow why did you say that? Like, what made you say that? And, you know, I'd go from there. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if I said, God, if you're real, please knock over this cup of water. If the cup knocked over, I, you know, there's so many ways I could rationalize that without assuming that it's a supernatural thing. So I figured if I do it this way, if God exists and he heard my prayer and he wants me to believe in him, then he could do it this way. Um, can you hold on one second? I th I think Bon. All right, never mind. He just left. Bon, oh, does he want to come in? I was about. I was only going to. You let can him let in people in actually. if you want. I don't nah, mind. I don't want okay. anybody in here. I don't. I don't like any of these people. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I tried to get Bond on my stream so many times because because he's a Christian, and I think oh, he's really? just afraid that I would challenge him too much. That's what I think. Mm. I say that somewhat jokingly. But I totally do it. <laughs> uh, anyway, but what, yeah. did you have a follow up or anything? Oh no, I was just wondering. Like, so um, the I I feel bad for you that you were suffering with that burden of like fearing that you were gonna like sin and then die and then be rejected by God or you know. So there like, is a natural word for that or a term for it. It's called scrupulosity. Uh, oh see. really yes and mm -hmm. it was the weirdest thing i was watching this show some it was like a ncis type of show mm -hmm. never watched the show before in my life don't really care for those type of shows and the the person 
you know, the detectives were like, hmm, this sounds like a case of scrupulosity. And the other detective is like, well, what the hell is that? And he said, basically, I can't remember exactly, but he said something like, it's where you feel like anything you do could potentially damn you. And so there, anyone who has scrupulosity, it's like having this religious OCD. For example, if, mm. if I tell you my brother is wearing a blue shirt today, but then I see him on that same day and he's wearing a red shirt, I'm going to think, oh my God, I just told a lie. Jesus, please forgive me. I'm so sorry. I did not mean to tell a mistruth, yada, yada, yada. Very intense stuff. <laughs> wow. Um, you know, let me see if I can find one of those videos. Because uh, they're... It's really interesting in the videos that I have found on it. It was exactly how I felt. And uh, to know that there's other people that deal with that sort of thing. It's like, wow, that is like that. It, I, I wasn't the only one. <laughs> that, and how long would you say you lived like that? Um, let's see. It started when I was uh, probably a teenager. Um, Maybe preaching. Uh, I think I was. Uh, I was probably nine at most, ten years old, up until I was about probably eighteen. Mm -hmm. And now there were different ages where I still had it, but it wasn't as um, severe. But uh, yeah, it was it. Yeah, it, I would say at least from ages 9 to 18 at minimum. Wow, at that is a long time to live daily with the feeling that you might be damned yes. for something you did. It, it was not a good feeling at all. Uh, let's, this is what it is. Uh, let me see here. Scrupulosity, a form of obsessive compulsive disorder involving religious or moral obsessions. Scrupulous individuals are overly concerned that something they thought or did might be a sin or other violation of religious or moral doctrine. Uh, common slash excessive concerns about having committed a sin, a loss of impulse control, behaving, uh, you know, striving to behave morally, going to hell, uh, purity, death, and blasphemy. Basically thinking that anything I do today could be a sin and, you know, God's not going to let that stand. <laughs> so it was really now, helpful. Gur, how did this fit? Get, because I, I understand this is like, okay, you know, this is kind of a disorder. But mm -hmm. I, I'm just wondering when you were thinking that, how did that really mesh with the idea of Jesus dying for our sins? Like, like the whole purpose was that Jesus died for the sins. So, you know, like... Well, um, mm -hmm. so, uh, again, since I was of uh, the doctrine of conditional uh, forgiveness or grace, however you want mm -hmm. to word it, um, the way I was, um, the way I was taught about Christianity in the Bible was: listen, uh, we must strive with fear and tr with fear and trembling to keep our, our salvation. And, mm -hmm. you know, if, if, if you're, if you if your eye causes you to sin, plug and cut it off. Uh, just this really, Hey, listen, not all though, not everyone's going to endure to the end and achieve uh, salvation. Like you may have salvation mm -hmm. now, but you can fall away from the, from the faith. You can, you can, uh, you know, if you cheat on your spouse or significant other, if you do any number of sins, uh, that will cut you off from God's forgiveness, but he's graceful and he will forgive you if you ask him, essentially. <laughs> so it was, it, it was a terrible way to live. And thankfully, I don't think too many people, too many Christians live that way. Mm -hmm. But for those who do, I mean, it's, it is a nightmare. And I, I only talk about it a little bit here and there. I, I, it's never like a main talking point that I have unless somebody asks me, you know, about my personal life, then I'll get into it. Now, if this was a common thing where everybody was, where every Christian dealt with these type of issues, uh, then maybe I would talk about it more and use it as a talking point. Yeah. Um, now, if you believe in OSAS, you know, once you're yeah. saved, you're always saved. Then all of that goes away. 
Um, which is funny because I did start to lean towards OSAS uh, mm -hmm. towards my later Christian life uh, to a degree. Um, but even then I would think, well, what if I'm wrong? Uh oh, Jesus, forgive me of my mm. sins in case I'm wrong. <laughs> you know, it was just, just this yeah. terrible nightmare scenario. Mm. Let's see if I can find one of those videos. I can't remember what I, what it was called. But I think uh, it would definitely be something to check out. I think any Christian uh, should look into this type of thing just because, hey, you know, they may have fellow Christians dealing with this and they don't even know it. Um, yeah. Trying to well, I know that. for me, I, you know, I, I, um, yeah, I'm like listening. wasn't like you. I mean, I didn't think that every sin could send you to hell or something like that or, you know, um, but there was a time when I feared being rejected by God. Um, and it, it was actually just from things in scripture that made me feel that way. Um, but, you know, I, I had, I, I finally did have a breakthrough and just realized how badly I was interpreting scripture. So, um, yeah, like I, I haven't suffered with that in many years, but I mean, for a long time, I, I wouldn't say it was a daily struggle. Definitely not because I wasn't thinking, oh, I sinned once and then I could be damned. But it was just more of like a vague feeling of, oh, God could reject me in the end, you know. That was um, how I felt, but turned up, you know, times 10. Right. And yeah. It, it, and it wasn't just that, oh, I'm failing God, but... Not only am I failing God, but God is judging me right now, even as I think about how I'm failing God. And also, since I'm failing God, I'm going to burn forever. Like It was just a, it was a terrible mixture of uh, fire and brimstone mixed in with, hey, if you're a Christian, that doesn't mean you're going to heaven unless you actually live it out. And if you sin and when you sin, you better be quick to say, Jesus, forgive me, you know, you know, truly repent. Oh, and mm -hmm. this is another thing. Um, when I would pray, uh, when I would say the sinner's prayer, or when I, whenever mm -hmm. I would say, Jesus, uh, forgive me for this sin that I've committed, I would feel like I would have to say the prayer exactly right. Um, oh, wow. For example, if I said, Jesus, forgive me of my sins, amen, or <clears throat> amen. Oh, <clears throat> let me start over. Jesus, forgive me of my sins, Amen. I would really like, like, enunciate a bunch of words. It, it, it and what's funny wow. is I knew what I was doing and how I viewed my salvation didn't make a lot of sense. But at the same time, it was almost like Pascal's wager, where it's like, well, I would rather torture myself saying it correctly and go to heaven than say it wrong and go to the lake of fire, which I took to be very literal. Um. So it is a big struggle. Wow. Yeah. That, that must be a nightmare. It, it was. And, you know, as an atheist now, it's something that I look back on and I can kind of chuckle, but it's it's really yeah. one of those things where it's like, man, if anybody's going through that, there's really nothing I could say to help them through it. Now, if mm -hmm. they deconverted, then, you know, if they didn't believe in God, then naturally most of that would go with it. But I do think they might have a little bit of PTSD. Thankfully, for whatever reason, I do not. Um, I've seen other atheist YouTubers, uh, even Cosmic Skeptic, probably one of the more famous Christian YouTubers or mm -hmm. atheist YouTubers, say every now and then he'll think about eternal hell and it'll scare him because like, whoa, what if I'm wrong? And then yeah. that 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 second that moment of wow only lasts for a few moments for him and then he's over it. Yeah. And. Uh, but for whatever reason, I don't have those. I, occasionally, That's I'll have good. a dream where I become a Christian, and it quickly goes from, oh, there is a God. All right, I'm going to heaven, to all of a sudden, oh, my God, hell is real, eternal gnashing of teeth, fire, you know, worms do not die. And so, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, wow. Do you mind if I play this video? Yeah, go for it. I have not watched this video in a couple of years, but I think this nails it on the head. Scrupulosity is a 
observed condition from the 1600s in the Catholic Church, monks were noticed as engaging in repetitive and excessive prayer. And the powers that be recognized that these monks' behavior and adherence to correct praying was not at all in keeping with what they would have hoped to be an expression of God's love, but that the person was trying to achieve an unrealistic state of holiness. And so the term scrupulosity grew out of those observations from the 1600s. Scrupulosity as a subset of OCD exists where persons are overly preoccupied with doing the right thing, whether that means religiously or morally or ethically. A person with scrupulosity will often pray over and over again and say the same prayer over and over again until they achieve a state of certainty that they've said it exactly in a way that God would approve of or that they've gotten it correct and pronounced every word so that God would recognize their, their sincerity. Scrupulosity with religion involves engaging in sometimes excessive rumination to prove that they haven't said something that God might consider to be blasphemous, or a person might engage in excessive confessions, excessive confessions to a rabbi, excessive confessions to a priest. They might have associations that are natural that they find might be offensive to God. And then they find themselves in a state of ungodliness or distance from God's love. And so these rituals involve trying to get closure so that they can put that moment behind them and move forward with a clear conscience that they haven't offended God. A way of differentiating scrupulosity from a person who's authentically devout is a person who's devout as they engage in behavior that fits their standards, that fits their values, they feel a sense of satisfaction that they're serving God's will. Or a person who is engaging in a high standard of ethics in societal standards feels a sense of accomplishment that they're living their life in a positive way, in a very, very ethical way, so that they have a, a higher regard for being disciplined. A person with scrupulosity is desperately trying to discount their brain's accusation that they might be doing something wrong. And so they never really achieve a sense of satisfaction. They're in an endless loop of escaping guilt or trying to rid themselves of anxiety. And so there's a complete lack of fulfillment in their behavior because it's often alien to what their actual values are. So there's a tremendous amount of torment for a person with scrupulosity in their praying, in their confessing. Whereas a person who actually has a devout religious attachment would leave confession feeling very, very satisfied. So common symptoms of scrupulosity involve an excessive preoccupation and checking with doing the right thing, either through God's eyes doing the right thing or through societal standards of doing the right thing. So that might involve using a significant other to constantly confess to. It might involve a lot of internet research. It might involve a lot of visits to a church or a synagogue or a mosque to find that the person is engaging in the correct religious behavior or having ethically correct thoughts. Scrupulosity can also exist with things that are not of a religious nature, such as doing the right ethical thing. So a person might say that they arrived home at 4.30 and it was actually 4.31 and they might get the thought, oh boy, I've lied about my arrival time. And so they might then restate their arrival time to represent the exact 4.31. Yeah, so th there's more, but when I saw this video, it was yeah. such a flashback. I was like, oh my God. That is exactly what I went through. I had no idea it was an actual condition. Now, to be fair, I was never like formally diagnosed with it, but I am positive if I went to go see somebody who specialized in this type of thing, I am positive they would have said, yep, you got that. You got scrupulosity. <laughs> so. Wow, that is, I mean, that really must have been miserable. But the whole, the, the, theological part of it i do find strange that you know um this kind of culture exists within christianity because it is um so like kind of non-biblical if you know like <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. jesus dying for sins you know eternal life is a gift and so it just seems kind of odd you know the i guess the way um you know my husband puts it is like Jesus didn't die to get us a 10% discount into the kingdom, right? <laughs> right. Like he died to get us to take care of it, like to get us in 100%. But like, it sounds like the way you were living, it was like, okay, 
Jesus got me so far, but now I've got to. Right. You know, now I have to pick up the mantle. Yeah. You know, it was a yeah, very terrible way to live. And the comments on those type of videos, it there are so many comments where they're saying, wow, you just described how I live and what I struggle with on a daily basis. And so wow. even reading the comments, I'm like, OK, well, yeah, I'm, def I'm definitely not alone. Well, granted, obviously, I don't live that way anymore at all. But like, you know, like uh, an example I used in my video where I talked about this thing is called the dark side of Christianity. Mm -hmm. And uh, a good example would be, let's say I'm, you know, I'm getting ready for work. Bless you. I'm getting Thank ready you. for work. And then I get in my car and I think to myself, wait, did I lock the door? And then I think, well, what could it hurt to spare, you know, five seconds to get out of my car, double check that the door is locked, get back in it and then go to work. Because what if this is the one day I don't do that? And this so happens to be the day that somebody came and tried to get into the house. And what do you, think, what do you know? The door was unlocked. And take that example and put it on an eternal torture is awaiting you if you fail to do this thing and that that is what it was like having scrupulosity well now do you do things like that like okay like for the example they gave in the video is okay you know you said you arrived at 4 30 but then you realized it was 4 31 oh, yeah, and you thought yeah. i lied but now do you still do that but without the eternal conscious torment connected to it uh, like no no i i do have I think I do have other forms of OCD, like the check in the door. I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I locked it, but let me just make sure. Now, that's not something that happens every day, but, you know, maybe once a month I'll, I'll have that thought. Um, or did I turn the oven off? I'm positive I did, but I'll just go check real quick. It, it's not a, it's not a frequent thing at all, mm -hmm. but um, yeah. But I, do I, you do it with moral issues? Like, do you think you lied if no, it turns no. out okay so mm -hmm. you so that that part of the morality part of it was only connected to fear it, of god right yes okay and mm -hmm. the way i saw it the way i viewed god and satan was god loves me but he is watching me like with a with a little um <laughs> with a little telescope or i'm sorry uh the magnifying glass Mm -hmm. And he's just waiting for me to do, say, or think one wrong thing. And then, oh, I'm on his list. Uh, I, I'm getting erased out of the book of life before he writes me back in before I, you know, after I repent again. And then on the other side of this war was Satan. And not only did I have God waiting for me to fall and fail, I had Satan tempting me and saying, oh, Yep, today's going to be the day you're going to mess up and then you're going to die and then you're going to come with me. So, you know, I felt like I was screwed mm -hmm. on either side. And and I do understand that's not a large representation of, of most Christians. That's one reason why I don't talk about it too much. But it's definitely yeah. another reason for me to be, I think, uh, kind of an uh, activist in my atheism. Yeah. Well, now looking back as someone who does know the Bible, but now doesn't believe it, do you think that the way that you were viewing God is the way that God was portrayed in the Bible? Um, not so much. I mean, I still think he's portrayed in the Bible as a bloodthirsty dictator. No offense, but uh, probably <laughs> okay. not as trigger happy as I thought that he was when I was a young Christian. Because um, the, the way... <laughs> The way I've explained it a few times uh, on other streams and especially in my videos is the Old Testament. God was like, hey, do as I say, or I'm going to kill you and your entire town. And then in the, in the New Testament, God's like, do as I say, or I'm going to send you to the lake of fire. So I was like, either way, Old Testament, New Testament, it, neither one of them uh, describe a pleasant God, at least mm. as far as I can tell. <laughs> Still pretty harsh. Yes. And if you think hell is eternal conscious torment, then that's far worse than oh, just yeah. yes, yeah, far worse. So at least with an uh, you know being annihilated uh, as a sinner, at least then it's like okay, well it's just death essentially how I view life now. Once I die, yeah. that's it. There's there's no going to the pearly gates for me, but there's also no going to hell either. Uh, which I'm actually 
beginning to work on a video uh, titled Atheism is a Bittersweet Pill. Uh, because with atheism, you lose the promise of heaven because you don't believe in heaven, but you mm-hmm. also lose the threat of hell. And, uh, and also, being a, an atheist, it makes job interviews and promotions and stuff a little bit better. I know this is a very westernized view of Christianity, but it's like, okay, if I don't get the job, I can't, tr- I, I don't have to beat myself up rationalizing why God wouldn't give me this job and maybe God's got something better for me. It's just, no, you know, mm. I just didn't meet the criteria. Whatever, I'll go to the next thing. <laughs> so I think there's pros and cons when you compare atheism with Christianity. I just think that the cons with Christianity, um, are far more than with atheism. Like when, it, like when it comes to death, disease, famine, torture, all that sort of stuff. Christians, I think Christianity has way too hard of a time justifying those things. Whereas as a naturalist and an atheist, I'm like, yeah, it's just that's just the way it is. Uh, no God necessary. <laughs> but does it bother you that you don't have a solution for it? Because like you know, for Christians, I feel like, well, but our story has a resolution. Our story has hope at the end. But like, to me, it's like, you know, life sucks and then you die. Is that like, you know, is that? Well, um, when it comes to Christianity, I still don't think it's a, a pleasant ending at all, especially to most of those who subscribe to eternal hell. Even if it's annihilation, uh, again, that's a, a much better view, I think, than mm-hmm. eternal torment. But even with annihilation, you get to heaven. Oh, guess what? Your mom didn't make it. Your significant other didn't make it. Your your children. I mean, mm. even if they're not burning forever, they're gone forever. And so I don't. I I feel like Christianity is just bleak and depressing, no matter how you dice it. Mm. A- unless you go to Christian universalism, but then it's just too much. You have to justify way too much in the Bible to get to that position. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I feel like, I think the, what if I had, like, if, if suddenly I had God powers, mm. I would make it to where um, murderers, dictators, and people like that would go to a place of punishment, but it would be corrective. And those who just lived a decent life would go to a, a life of, you know, bliss or uh, maybe a second earth that's better. I mean, this is all just me just, you know, mm-hmm. basically How you would fantasizing. Do it if you were about, God. Yeah, yeah, I would do it. <laughs> um, but again, living for eternity, no matter how you dice it, to me is a scary thought. Because I feel like at, at some point, at least, at least naturally, like you're all the the neurons and synapses in your brain, I feel like they're eventually going to get worn out. Now, granted, I guess if you're in this spiritual body, whatever that is, I guess you could find a way around that. But at least here on earth, happiness fades. And if it didn't fade, I just feel like you'd probably lose perspective in life anyway. But again, I'm just rambling at this point. <laughs> so, but but let let's let's imagine this God scenario a little bit longer. I want to know what would you do like completely? Like, how would you set things up? Like, okay, we can't change the earthly scenario right now, but how would you set it up for the afterlife? Um, like, what would be your requirements? You know, you said live a good life, but what would that look like? Uh, basically you know, don't go out and kill and intentionally cause harm to others. I think that would be a good start. Mm -hmm. Uh, I definitely would not condone slavery or, you know, try to wipe out most of the planet's population. (laughs) Yeah. So, and I would never, I, I would never even imagine Mm -hmm. even considering creating a place where people just suffer for eternity. Granted, you don't subscribe to that idea, which is great. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would definitely take that one off the list. <laughs> you yep. know, no eternal agony in the afterlife. I don't care what you've done. I use the Hitler as an example a lot. Because okay. with Hitler, it's like, okay, yes, that dude, if there is an afterlife, he deserves to suffer in it. 
but I wouldn't say for eternity. Like it, it, he's mm-hmm. just a speck, just a blip in the, the eternal uh, sense of existence. And I don't think having a little blip of a life, no matter how much harm you did, uh, would warrant eternal agony. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe a million years of agony, maybe a billion, maybe a couple trillion, but never eternity. Like eternity. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Now, I agree with that. What? But let's just suppose, and I don't want to use Hitler directly because people get mad if I have mercy <laughs> on Hitler. Okay. But yeah. let's just suppose. I, mean, I, I understand that, that psychological state, but if you really no, think about let's it. Let's just like, say yeah. there's a really bad person that's killed a lot of people. And that person, but, you know, as God you're also considering all the factors that led up to that person doing that. And what if that person, you know, you know, they threw other factors like environmental factors, um, parental abuse and all this stuff, like all of those factors Mm -hmm. shaped the person into being a killer And then you have another person who, you know, they live a decent life, but they also, you know, maybe they, their character, you know, was, they could have been a lot better based on their upbringing. So like, how would you sort all that out? Um, I don't know. And I feel like that really becomes a problem for for the Abrahamic God in general, because how would this deity sort that out? Because like I said, you have some people that are born into a home that is abusive. Uh, maybe the brain isn't, is lacking in certain areas. Maybe the part that controls emotion is mm-hmm. ramped up or turned off completely or somewhat. And so there's so many, not only environmental things, uh, of the person, but also the internal things of the person as yeah. well. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause yeah, like for example, I'm sure you've heard of the, the guy who I can't remember the name, but one day he, he started to have like pedophilic thoughts, like sexual thoughts and urges towards minors and children. Mm-hmm. And they looked at his brain and they saw that there was a tumor growing on uh, some part of the brain. I can't remember what, and when they removed the tumor, all those thoughts and urges just vanished. And mm. then he started to have those feelings again, those urges. And they looked back. This was years later. They looked back at his brain. Oh, the tumor grew again. So they cut it out again. And then it, all that stuff re- uh, resolved, um, which also goes into free will, naturally, because it's like, OK, what am I doing that I actually don't have control over? It's just something going on in my physical brain. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how, you know, the Abrahamic God would deal with such a thing, mm. especially when he actualized the world in which that, along with everything else, would take place. But that might well, be giving me I mean, a I can track. answer how that I, I can answer how the Abrahamic God is taking <laughs> care of that. All right. He, All right. he leveled so the pers- playing field through Jesus, because with Jesus, it doesn't matter if you're the one who had the bad environment or you're the one who had the good environment or you're the one who had the tumor growing on your brain or you're the mm-hmm. like because he took care of it for all of us no matter what your situation is but what about those um <clears throat> like in the example of the tumor on the brain mm-hmm. um that's someone they don't have control over that tumor growing until they right get it back diagnosed and then somebody can do the the operation but somebody like that doesn't literally does not have the mental capacities to combat it right Um, so like do they get a pass because of that or girl everybody gets a pass that person gets a pass and everybody gets a pass everyone gets forgiven well uh, okay, let's take that person. Well, let's say there's a, this is hypothetical, but it derives mm-hmm. from that example. What if there's a, maybe something that's not formed, fully developed in the brain of mm-hmm. somebody who they, they can't believe, like they just cannot mm-hmm. believe in God at all. It's not, it's not a choice. It's not a decision. It's just oh, incapable. 
Um, mm -hmm. So they don't even have the option of asking believe in a deity that forgives, nor do they believe in the concept of sin. Because mm. then you have somebody who didn't ask to be forgiven because they see no one to ask and they see no reason to ask in the first place. Yeah. Well, I have great hope for that person because I do believe that Jesus's salvation is powerful and that it's so powerful, it's hard to escape it. Well, so... <laughs> I'm sorry, I like what Bia said. Jesus is Oprah. You get a pass, and you get a pass. Everyone here gets passes. <laughs> Does Oprah say that? I haven't seen Oprah. Well, uh, Oprah, she, she'll do that thing. She'll be like, you know, you get a car, and you get a car. Everyone here gets a car. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, um, yeah, but it's, I, I forget what we were just yeah, I'm sorry. What was the last point? <laughs> no, um, but I, I, I would have, I have great hope for the person who has trouble believing. And of course, there are people who not only have trouble believing, but, but they don't even see a reason to even look into the possibility of believing, um, like. It's not even a, a factor. Uh, like my girlfriend, for example, Mrs. Mania, she is, she identifies as agnostic and she's really quite apathetic to it. I think a better term for her would be, uh, what is it called? Apatheist. Like she does not care one way or another. To her, mm -hmm. life is about, you know, uh, achieving your goals, living not as a scumbag and never thinks about religion and she hates philosophy. Anytime I bring up philosophy or God or atheism or politics, it's just like, ugh, whatever. How does this, how is this going to help me at my job <laughs> is essentially it. And that's not me knocking her. I wish I was that way, but I find myself really passionate about my activism. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is interesting because I mean, the way that she's living, if, if I were an atheist, that's how I would live too. Like I would not, spend a single second talking or thinking about any of this because if I well, really didn't believe it you know then well that's the thing uh I get that but it's kind of like this if somebody believed in a magical unicorn or goblins or trolls that's like whatever I don't think about it but if these same people were trying their best to force others to adopt their ideologies because of the deities they believe in. And they use the government and voting and, you know, would buy out politicians to make sure that their view of morality was enforced. That's when I think everybody should care. Cause like, I, I, obviously I don't believe in God, but one reason why I talk about it so much, one is because I do feel like the belief in God does lead to a lot of other stuff. Like 9-11 is a great example. And also, even that aside, it just, I, I find it fascinating to see how, for example, a Muslim will laugh at Scientology and a Christian will laugh at Jehovah's Witnesses, yet they, for whatever reason, every critique that they will have at, for another religion, they will not apply it to their own. And anytime the other religions that they're critiquing or, or criticizing, anytime they use a defense, it's like, you're, you're obviously not thinking about this fully. You're making excuses. You're special mm. pleading. But then they'll turn around and do the same exact thing and, and pretend that they're the same ones. We're not the crazy ones. It's that other religion over there. I'm not saying that's you by any means. I'm just saying in general, um, I don't really know where I was going with this point. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and that definitely isn't me because I... I you know, I have great respect for Muslims, for Jehovah's Witnesses, for anybody who recognizes the creator and wants to serve him. I think that is very commendable. So, um, you know, I wouldn't be the one laughing oh, yeah. at those other yeah. religions. No. And, and, you know, I might, uh, I do have to highlight Icarus's comment, belief in God harms children, little girls, for example. <laughs> and that is yeah. another thing. Um, and again, I know the the mental abuse that I felt as a kid, not saying that my 
Well, I mean, in a way, I guess you could say my parents did cause me mental abuse because they were the ones pouring out all of this garbage on me, even though they did not agree with me, gave me of my sins on an hourly basis. It, but even my dad was like, well, I mean, hey, that's, I mean, what's so wrong about that? At least we know he's going to heaven, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Which, anyway. Um, mm. uh, but yeah. Yeah, I see. Um, it, and I mean, but do you think that, like, for example, uh, do you think that all, all of, all parents are harming their children with teaching about God? Because, I mean, your case is a, is kind of unique. I mean, it's not yeah. I, I would say my case is uh, in the minority, but then you have others that. Uh, you know, teenagers who like have who who are gay and then they live with a a religious household, be them Christian or Muslim, and they and they're constantly told, depending on the household, that oh, that's a sin. You know, you're not going to get to heaven. You know, you, you, that's giving in to Satan, and that is child abuse, as far as I can tell. And so, even though not all Christian or religious kids have the same experience that I had. I'm sure they have different experiences with a similar result. Uh, Cause like with my family, I could not imagine being gay in my family because they, they are very old school and mm -hmm. they, you know, they'll say, you know, being gay is an abomination, you know, it goes against the natural laws that the Lord ordained, <laughs> you know, yeah. And I, so if if I were gay, I don't think my parents would disown me. But if I was a younger, like if I was a a kid, a teenager, young adult, they would. I don't think they would kick me out. But God knows they would probably, you know, hire people to perform exorcisms or some crap like that. Now, with other types of Christian households, they may not do that. They may just kick out the gay individual. Um, not saying that's the case for everyone, but you'll find j just uh, tons and tons of of people who came out as gay that their families disowned. And I'm not saying that religion is the sole cause of all this garbage, but I would say at minimum it allows it, at most it demands it. Um, mm. That's me trying to be as fair as I can. And then, of course, I, I know the KKK they don't represent Christianity, but they definitely definitely use the Bible in their Christian faith as a reason and as motivation to continue their racism. And again, I know that's not every Christian. I'm not saying Christians are racist or anything, but, you know. So I feel like the belief in God isolated is fine. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, you believe in, in God, you know, that's fine. But as soon as you start trying to impose those beliefs and the morality you derive from that belief onto mm -hmm. others, that's when it becomes problematic. Yeah. Well, Gur, and wait, I, I have to say hi to Titan Uranus. I haven't seen you lately and I uh, hope to see you on my channel soon. Um, and, uh, but yeah, it's good to see you. Um, wow. So he says, when I came out, my mother said, you've brought shame on the family. I looked her in the eye and said, white trash, a gay son raises you a couple of social notches. <laughs> Get real. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah. So, and I, I'll just say for the record, you know, if one of my kids came and told me they were gay, I would not, you know, in all at all make them feel like they were not accepted or loved um by me or by god so i don't think i think your case might be a little bit unique well just you like know, mine is unique mm -hmm. i think yeah. yours is probably a little bit unique well i i will say i think um you know christian religion especially in the south um is you know, pretty different than what I've experienced for most of my Christian life. And I, I've been, you know, I've moved around a lot. So I've been to a lot of different churches, including churches in the South. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I do think there's kind of a, a difference in approach. And I don't think I would be, um, you know, I think there are many 
Christians who think like I do. So, um, but of course it's, it's probably not the majority. Mm -hmm. Um, but what do, it doesn't really matter what I think, what matters is what God thinks. And so I think, um, uh, you know, well, the, the problem mm -hmm. for me becomes the Christian thinks that they know what God thinks. They think yeah. they know what God says. And sometimes what they think God says is, you know, is good and beneficial. And then other times it seems like most of the time it's more harmful than anything and divisive. Uh, again, not every case, but that seems to be uh, the case. Um, because like if somebody just says, I believe in God, again, that's fine. Now, even if they had no harmful beliefs and did not try to force society with other like-minded individuals to impose their, their morality onto others, that's great. But I would still be like, well, okay, I just got to know, why do you believe this thing? Even though it's harmless, I'm just curious in like, how do they logically get to the positions that they have? So even like, for example, if you were like, you know what, girl, I believe in God and God loves everyone. And, you know, he, God's going to do the right thing. And he loves gay people. He, he, he never actually condoned stoning people. And, you know, he actually never spoke highly of, of slavery and yada, yada, yada. I would say, well, that's great. Okay. You're a type of Christian that I can, you know, actually get behind. But at the same time, I'd still be thinking, well, even though your beliefs are good, why do you think that they're true? And like, what, what's yeah. your logic? So there's still another side of me. The main side of me is, I, I think most religion, at least most of the Abrahamic religions and doctrines they're in cause more harm than good. That aside, I, the other side of me is just simply curious and to see if somebody can change their position, if they can be shown that their thinking is inconsistent or if they have cognitive dissonance. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah. Um, B.S. Lewis wanted to know, did I, did, uh, he says, I know she thinks that God still inspired Leviticus. He wanted to know something about, do I think it says that the Bible, there's an, that being gay is an abomination. Yeah. Um, so the Bible in it, especially in Leviticus and, uh, you know, in the books of Moses calls a lot of things an abomination. And yes, it does say a man lying with another man is an abomination. So, um, but it also, you know, if for those who are going to use that today, well, then, you know, what else is an abomination? A pepperoni pizza right. shopping on Saturday. You can be killed for shopping on Saturday. You can be killed for uh, a lot of things. And again, all so, that's God ordained, is it not? Well, yeah. I mean, that was, or at least that was. was, yeah, absolutely. That was the covenant that, God made with the Israelites in the time of Moses. And um, so there, there are a lot of that covenant does not apply to anyone today. So, um, you know, nothing should, from that covenant should be used to say what God is calling for today. Well, uh, I, I get that according to Christian theology, that the old mm -hmm. Testament was the old covenant and, and the New Testament is the New Covenant. You know, Old Testament was law. New Testament is grace. Mm -hmm. I get all that. But I still, even, even granting that, I still think, well, okay, that's great that God is no longer commanding these things. But the fact that he did for a mm -hmm. time is still very problematic to me. Because it's like, mm -hmm. okay, God says not to stone disobedient children and gay people. Okay, that's great. But he used to. So why did he why did he not only allow but command it at one time? Yeah. Even if it's a small time, it's like God still commanded these things. And that's what I take issue with. Yeah. So it's like yeah. even though he progressed, it's like, well, that's great. I'll I'll clap <laughs> for that. Like, he was still a terrible person in the old testament. Well, I wouldn't say he progressed because I don't think God was ever much of a rules guy so we oh, have to oh, what how can you say that <laughs> well we have to remember that those laws that he gave to the israelites okay mm -hmm. were specifically for them 
and they were for a limited period of time. Now, think about all the people who lived before God gave those laws, because, you know, in the beginning, there, there weren't any laws, right? So for most of human history, God hadn't made any laws. Um, and, and, and um, you know, for most people groups that have lived on the earth, God never gave them any laws. So the only laws, you know, that, I mean, the only time that God gave those laws was for the people of Israel. And I do believe that, you know, he had reasons for the, for making things very strict. Maybe it was just to get these people to survive until he could bring the Messiah. So, um, you know, but I, I mean, I am not the best person to answer why God did exactly what he did. You know what, Gert? I, I'll just be perfectly honest with you. I have a problem with it too. Like mm. when I read that, I'm like, whoa, like, dang God, <laughs> you know? So, um, you know, that's, that's still something that I wrestle with. I think it was pretty harsh. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that because I feel like most Christians, they're like, nope, I've got to die on this hill. And A, if they're being honest when they share their thoughts, then I'm like, well, okay, at least you admit it. But I, I am glad that you can read these just terrible laws and guidelines in the Old Testament and say, yeah, okay, I do have a, not saying it's wrong, but I do have a hard time digesting it. So I, I will give you that. Um, but yes, yeah, and like when it comes to, I remember like the, 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 the story of Noah and the flood. I remember mm -hmm. when I started to, started to slowly lean towards atheism or at least non, non-Christianity. Mm -hmm. I remember I was with my girlfriend at the time, ex Mrs. Mania, <laughs> and mm -hmm. we were at this church. Um, because I was still going to church back then, even though I was really finding it hard to keep the faith. I remember we went to go pick up one of our friend's kids from the nursery. And I think the kid was like a toddler, maybe three years old. And I remember looking at the paintings on the wall of this little Christian nursery on the side of the church. And it was Noah and all the cute little elephants and giraffes mm -hmm. and hippos on the on the little ark and uh below them was you know all the water and i remember thinking right then and there wait a second this is a terrible thing to show kids you're you're making god's killing of the entire population of the earth well most of the population of the earth as this cute little bedtime story for kids like this is the most, it's one of the more wicked stories of the Bible, as far as I could tell, because yeah. it's like, God's like, all right, I'm sick of all these people doing all these things that I knew they were going to do before I created them. So I'm just going to kill 99% of them, including most of the animals, maybe mm. even all the animals, because, you know, mixing uh, non-salt water with salt water, I'm sure would devastate a lot of sea life. And I just, it, it just hit me like, like uh, like a smack to the face. I was like, wait a second. Why are they making this story so cute and cuddly when it is probably one of the worst stories in the Bible? Well, now, see, I will, I'll, I'll disagree on that one. I have no problem with Noah's flood. And it, it's like, to me, that there's like absolutely nothing wrong with what God did in that story. And it's astounding oh, wait, wait, wait. to me that so many people pick on that story. I'm like, oh my gosh, so you guys. There's, <laughs> so, okay, so I know with the passage of, you know, Stone and Gaze, you said, you know, it's hard to digest, I think is a, a, a charitable, way, a charitable yeah. way to express what I think you right. said. But you don't feel that way about God flooding the entire population. Well, let me no. ask you this. Do you believe it was a global flood or a localized flood? I do believe it was a global flood, but I'll leave open the possibility that it was okay. a global flood. Mm -hmm. So, like, how many kids, how many toddlers and babies and pregnant women do you think God killed in that flood? I, I don't know. but And, and you, you have no, like, that doesn't bother problems me. at all with that? No. Because just... God is the creator. He's the one who gave life. So why, why would it be wrong for him 
to realize that it's better if that life disappears. Well, it just, it, it, again, it just makes God look like a dictator. It's like, oh, y'all are not, y'all are practicing the free will that I gave you. Now I'm going to kill you for practicing said free will that I gave you. And well, not only that, but it's like all, the, all these people, most of them, if we assume the story to be true, probably didn't even know about their God. They, I'm sure they had all kinds of different gods. It may be a couple of gods that looked like the Abrahamic God, you know, the creator of everything. But mm -hmm. like, and like, it's just, that puzzles me that you don't find. <laughs> yeah. Well, and once again, I mean, I'm starting with the, the, the idea that God is good and just, and that I believe what it says in the story that the reason God destroyed the humanity is because, and actually he saved humanity, but um, you know, the reason that he destroyed is because every thought that every human had was only evil all the time. And the earth was filled with violence. So, um, you know, the earth being filled with violence. So, I mean, it, it, I'm considering God knows when it's time to wipe things out and start <laughs> again. And he actually saved humanity, um, saved you know, family. by saving Noah's family. So. Well, okay. Yeah. I, I do want to highlight Jay's uh, comment here. Yeah. He says, uh, do you believe God is omniscient? Well, it depends in what sense that he means because some people when they say that do it do i i believe that he knows all things that are possible to know so but like um i'm not sure that god knows the future because the future doesn't maybe doesn't exist yet right so i i'm an open theist so i believe that hmm. like loosely i believe that god doesn't know everything in the future um, well, that's something we can come back to. I'm still hung up yeah. on, on God killing on the everybody. Flood. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So like even those who take it as a metaphor, an allegory, mm -hmm. uh, just, you, you know, uh, it, it's all just this big metaphor of God's forgiveness and justice and mercy, yada, yada, yada. I still can't even take them seriously because it's like, okay, What's what lesson did we learn here? We learned if we don't do what God says, He's just going to kill all of us, including our families and friends, and enemies, strangers, anyone that we know, and everyone we don't know, all going to drown. And then, of course, take it a step further all the ones that He drowned in the flood, He's going to roast. Unless, you know, I know you don't believe in the literal lake of fire, but to the, the Christians who do, it's like, so not only did God drown these people and now he's drying them off in the lake of fire <laughs> it just it you can see how this becomes this huge uh moral morally uh, like just terrible thing to consider and that's that's how i view christianity is it's like okay we have this god who's supposedly all loving mm -hmm. uh creates this creation a an all perfect creator creates an imperfect creation why who knows he's god he can do whatever he wants to do uh, the the little rugrats get out of control, and so God just says, oh, "I'm just going to kill them all, except for this family over here, and then we'll repopulate the world through you know incest and all that fun stuff." Which that's mm -hmm. a sidebar that doesn't really much matter, but just the principle of just wiping out your creation because you didn't like what they were doing. It just that just astounds me, especially if God knew he was going to do that, which goes back to the omniscience. Like, did, in your perspective, do you think, do you believe God knew that his, his uh, creation was going to become corrupt, uh, quote unquote? Um, I think God knew all the possibilities, but I don't know exactly what he knew with certainty. Mm. Um, but I, I want to ask you a question since no, you said off limits. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Well, <laughs> well I just want to ask this very quickly. Do you think that um, it's 
it's wrong to bomb ISIS just because we don't like what they're doing? Uh, do I think it's wrong to bomb ISIS because we don't like what they're doing? No, I don't. I, I don't think that would be a good position to take. That we should bomb them. Okay, so you're you you're. Would you let ISIS like run rampant and run around raping and killing women and I mean and killing people and taking over the world and chopping off everybody's heads that don't believe in Islam? Well, I, I, is there another solution to where like we send a couple people over there to to kill the majority of the people causing and inflicting the harm? Is that an option? Well, I mean, so you're saying it's okay to kill ISIS. Yeah, like, it's, I, I it, the, it's, it's okay, okay to, to kill the offenders. Yeah, depending on their offense. In this case, ISIS. Yeah, I would say that's probably yeah, a good thing. Okay. So you have no problem killing ISIS even for because we don't like what they're doing. And because, that's what I'm saying about God. Like in the same way that you don't have a problem with us killing ISIS, I don't have a problem with God killing anyone that he thinks should be dead. Um, well, here's the thing. This might be a bit of a sidebar, but okay. since we're talking about stories of the Bible, God can clearly harden hearts in the Bible. Um, mm -hmm. Not only was it Pharaoh, it was uh, at least one other person that where it specifically states God hardens this person's heart. I can't remember who it was in the Bible, but I think it's around the same period. So if God can harden hearts, why doesn't he just soften hearts? Because mm. if he's going to influence or control somebody's free will, then it just seems like he would at least do it for the, you know, for the good instead of just to keep screwing with people or killing people. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. And actually, I pray all the time that God would soften people's hearts and so boo, I, I, don't want I clearly it. think that kidding. what <laughs> I said, boo, I don't want that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I clearly think that God is capable of doing something to influence people. Otherwise I wouldn't pray that. Um, and you're right that in, you know, it says in Exodus that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. I do believe Multiple that before times. it says God hardened Pharaoh's heart, it says that Pharaoh hardened his heart. So, um, and that, 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 that's an, I'm sorry to interrupt, but that is another thing I've, I've had Christians tell me, well, Pharaoh hardened his own heart. And so I'm thinking, okay, so Pharaoh hardened his heart and then God steps in and literally hardens it more. Yeah. Like yeah. I've already punched you, but now I'm going to, you know, I'm going to slap you on top of the punch. I'm going to Will Smith you. <laughs> yeah, you know what? When 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 I when I was first reading the Bible and first really became a follower of Jesus, that God hardening Pharaoh's heart bothered me. That really really bothered me. Um and I can't explain what changed in me, but that doesn't bother me anymore. It's not that I I didn't get an answer. Um Oh. But it just, it, it doesn't bother me. I don't know why, but it doesn't. Oh, Rebecca, so, uh, yeah. this is a quick sidebar. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, but. Go ahead. I made this meme. It, <laughs> you were not in mind when I made this meme, but. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I was at work and I was thinking, I just came up with a great idea for, you know, the, the whole Will Smith meme. But anyways, uh, we're not about to get into it. Young Earth creationism, but I, I well, have to show you know what? I'm getting into Young Earth creationism with Sal tonight on his channel. If anybody wants to watch at eight o'clock, uh, my time, eight o'clock. I don't know what time it is. Your time. Oh, you're in. You're on the East Coast, so you're two hours ahead. So, ten o'clock, oh, ten thirty. Um, Jay says this. Uh, There's a problem with the ISIS analogy when it comes to engaging combatants in a military conflict, and that's not the same as us attacking non-combatants in that conflict. Right. But I mean, the point is we can, and yeah, the, the analogy only goes so far because obviously God was killing everyone in the flood. Right. So, but, um, so the analogy doesn't stretch completely, but the, the point I was trying to make is that if, 
we as human beings are capable of saying other human beings, like we don't like their actions and we don't like them strongly enough, they need to be stopped and killed, right? Mm -hmm. Then why can't the creator make that decision about the creation that he made? Like, why, why would that, you know, be wrong for God to do something that we do? Well, where I feel it becomes wrong is when our morals come from this God, like this objective morality that comes from God, where God says, you know, do not murder. And then he goes and he commands his followers to murder. Uh, and and that's when he's not doing the murdering or the killing, I should say, himself. Because I know there's a difference between murder and killing. But um, I, I do have one thing to, to point out here from Pixie. She says, that was a terrible analogy, referring to the ISIS you should have asked, do you think it is okay to get rid of ISIS by nuking the country? That is more accurate. And I, I, I agree. That's why I was like, is there another option? Like, is it strictly we got to bomb them to hell? Or can we just send in a couple people to take out the evildoers? Yeah. Um, well, but in the case of if we believe what the Bible says about the flood, and I do, you know, it says that Every human thought was evil all the time. So God was just killing the evildoers. He was killing everyone. And some <laughs> might say, how can a baby be evil? How can a baby? Well, yeah. you know, um, I'm not saying the baby is as culpable or whatever. Obviously, a baby can't, you know, running or run around doing the types of evil that adults are doing. But I still think God reserves the right to you know, kill his creation if he thinks that's what needs to be done. And there are, you know, ways in which even down to babies, they could have become so corrupted that they did need to be wiped out. And so, um, yeah, thank you, Leo. I want to be there and I will try to be there. That's, I, I, I may be able to tune in for a little bit, but I am streaming with um, Sal uh, at let's see, 9 p.m. CST. So, um, or 9, 9 or 9.30, I can't remember. I have to check. But um, yeah, so thank you for the invitation and I'll try to watch a bit. And I'm about to post Leo's, uh, the linkage to that premiere. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. you know, there are some people like, I mean, a, a lot of people promote this idea that and it, it could be true. I'm I don't like to like go beyond what the Bible says. But, you know, um, a lot of people who say that the reason that God wiped out the people in the time of Noah's flood is because of the event with the Nephilim where, you know, the sons of God thought the daughters oh, of men boy. were beautiful and all this stuff. OK, I don't I don't know if that's true, but I mean, that. That is one possibility for. Do you, you know, believe in the Nephilim? Um. Well, what or, do you or do mean? you believe that, that angels what? came down and had sexual yeah, relations with women? Yes. Oh, okay. That. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you know what? We we can do a whole we can do a whole thing on that, Kerr. <laughs> Did you uh, find something fun to to pick at me about? Is that a fun topic for you? <laughs> well, it's just, well, um, I, I will say, um, I do think that if, if someone believes, if a Christian believes that Satan was once an angel who became rebellious and prideful in heaven and got kicked out of, along with all of his followers, and then there was these other angels who were not even Satan's angels, they were later kicked out because of their sexual desires and act, uh, interactions with with women on earth they get got, they got kicked out so it just seems to logically follow as far as i can tell that even christians can get kicked out of heaven because mm. here we have angels in the literal presence of god committing no-nos and they get kicked out of heaven for said no-nos like my terminology no-nos <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think we'd have to really talk about what does it heaven mean? Because actually, I think um, 
using the term heaven is, I mean, we, we use that um, to describe sometimes we often Christians use this as the term to describe the afterlife when in fact, the new Testament doesn't really describe the afterlife in terms of heaven very often at all. Yeah, I agree with that part. It so doesn't. it's the kingdom of God. So we haven't seen anyone be kicked out of the kingdom of God. So basically there is two different locations. Yeah. Um, sounds like a, Cheap get out of jail free card to me, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I mean, we're when we're talking about heaven, where you know the angels are in the presence of God, right? I I don't mm. think that is the same place at all as described, um, you know, in the Bible as the kingdom of God. So well, I don't think it's a cheap get out of jail free because I think it's 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 clear even you know that you know God is creating. Uh, a, a new place that for us. I, I do have a question from Carol, the 406 mm -hmm. atheist, who says, how does Rebecca determine which parts of the Bible to take as metaphor and which to take as literal? That's, that's probably a, a loaded question. question, to be fair. But... No, I'd say that's fine. I, I don't I don't mind. Um, You know, I, I take the parts that seem to be intended as metaphorical, such as visions, dreams, poetry, um, you know, those kind of things, the, the parts that we would normally understand if we were looking at any literature, um, you know, I, I take the same things in the Bible as metaphor, metaphorical as I would take in other literature. Other parts that seem to be historical narrative, I take as historical narrative. Um, so that's how I work it out. And to me, there's a pretty clear difference. There's some parts that are ambiguous, such as the book of Job is, um, you know, a lot of poetry. Um, it seems to be historical narrative, but it also may not be. Um, it may be, you know, so that that's one of those ones that's kind of confusing about, you know, is this a real person being described? Um, I think there is some ambiguity yeah. there. Well, okay. Uh, if you don't mind, I have yeah. to get back to Netflix. Yep. <laughs> okay, I think so... I need to go too. Yep. Thank you so much. This was no, a lot of fun. No, no I, I, I have a question about the, uh, as far as the Nephilim goes, if you had, if you could spare yeah, it. We can, yeah, we can, yeah, we can wrap it up in a few minutes. Yeah. Um. Okay. So going by that logic, angels have sexual reproductive organs, right? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know how this works. You're now you're getting into territory where I'm just going to have to say I don't know. Because if if you believe angels came down from heaven or someplace you know north of heaven mm -hmm. to have sex, that means that going by that logic, angels have penises and maybe even vaginas or both or other stuff like that. That just raises. So many questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. And, you know, that's going to be one of those things that like there we there isn't enough in the Bible for me to speak authoritatively about that. I mean, it seems to me when I read that paragraph and there are different in Christian interpretations, but it seems to me that they are having sexual relations. Um, and having children with human women. So that's what I read when I read that. Some people, you know, interpret it differently, but. No. Um, yeah. Okay. Now, if you have to go, that's fine. Uh, I, I still have more questions on this topic. Yeah, but we can, I can, go, let's, uh, we, you know, I, I'm, I'm curious about your questions. I don't know if I'll be able to answer them, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, we can go a little bit longer, maybe like 10 more minutes or something. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That, that should be perfect. Um, okay. So let's see here. So I'm trying to think of which route to take anytime, any, in, anytime there, there, I have a question in regards to Christianity and their doctrines, there's always like three different ways, three different theologies yep. to, to go through. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess we'll start with this one, which I think encompasses a lot of things. 
when God created these angels, presumably with these sexual organs uh, and genitalia, did did the angels know that having sex with women would be a sin? Would it be a sin or they would get kicked out? So if they get kicked out, it would have to be a sin. It'd have to go against some law, right? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're going back to your OCD days there, Gert. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> well, it's just, I mean, it's this just... is an interesting take. Like what you're focusing in on is, did they sin and is it going to get them kicked out? <laughs> like, yeah, I can, see, I can so, see that. But so like, I, this is something I can't answer. Like I said, this is one paragraph in the Bible. And so that I you can't... believe and you 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 take yeah. to be the case. Now, if you were like, no, I don't. I, I think that's just a bad interpretation. Then I wouldn't be asking you this question. That's why. That's right. why my my question before I began any of that was, do you believe in the Nephilim or angels having sex with women? Yeah, I mean, I it it's the same as if like you know, there's let's just. Suppo you know, if I ask you, like, do you believe in the moons of Jupiter? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do sure. you believe? Okay. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me all of the moons of Jupiter? No. And what, what their constitution is? Like, you know. <laughs> well, no, no, I, I could not. Okay. So you only had, you have limited information about the Ju moons of Jupiter. And I have limited information and I have no way to access any well, more information the, about this well the, the, the thing yeah. is though like when you say you uh believe in these things i feel like there's a lot of stuff a lot of baggage that comes along with that that could influence for for better or for worse whereas when it comes to the moons of jupiter and whatnot it's like yeah i mean it doesn't i mean yeah i don't know how any of that works but you know it, it has no relevance in my life and it doesn't uh influence my worldview in my opinions but i feel right. like if you believe that there were angels that got kicked out of a heavenly realm because they were getting naughty with with humans i feel like that opens up a huge can of worms for different doctrines it's, <laughs> it, it's that little domino that progresses mm. um, okay what do you think that opens up what 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 trouble am, are, am i going to start a cult or what, what do you think <laughs> no, is going to happen here it's just <laughs> It just, again, it goes to show that even if you're in heaven or a heaven, you're somewhere that's not on earth, that's closer to God, that you can still sin. So I feel like that would jeopardize uh, being a Christian in heaven uh, and continuing to be. And also OSAS gets thrown out the door, I would imagine, because not only can... Can humans sin in in re repercussions from God, but also angels who are there with God or closer to God than than Earth is? You know, I I feel like it just opens up this huge can of worms from from, from different avenues, and this kind of goes back to the, the the Earth avenue, which is God created these angels knowing that they would have these thoughts and desires, and not only knowing it, but acting on it and then he would know he'd have to kick them out and then they would influence you know human geologies because assuming that this is true then there is some you know demon blood or fallen angel blood in some humans so it, it just this this huge thing this little question if depending on how you answer it can really influence a lot of stuff yeah well um i don't think that this um you know puts human salvation in jeopardy like um as far as what what will a human be like we we've already been told in the new testament what a human will be like and we're in a very different situation than the angels were because we are in this fallen state now and we're making a choice about whether we want to remain in our corrupted state or if we want to be perfected in Christ. So, um, you know, I've said, hey, I want to be in God's kingdom. I want to be perfected. And that's the choice that I've made. Well, and like, it, go and, ahead. Well, I was just going to say, another thing is, I feel like believing in the Nephilim contradicts what Jesus had said. Really? Um, 
me see if I can find it. E okay, it's uh, well, I don't have it on the screen, but I have it on my phone. It's Mark twelve twenty five. Jesus said, when the dead rise, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. Right. Now, I guess you could say, well, you could still have sex, but there's just no marriage in heaven. I, I guess you could interpret it that way. No, and I hope there's no Christian watching that thinks I'm saying that at all. No, there's, because it doesn't I think logically what Jesus follow? is saying here is they're not going to have sex in heaven. And, you know, I don't think the angels are having sex in heaven. The but whole paragraph, the, but the whole origins. paragraph was about how those angels, you know, left their positions and, you know, thought women were beautiful and took and had relations with them. So were they in heaven in God's presence when they were having relations with women? No, they were on earth. But still capable of those desires and had the actual tools to enact on those desires. So I, I just, I mean, I know I, not I don't all, see the problem here. I know not all Christians believe that angel, that, that whole Nephilim thing. But to those who do, I just feel like, again, it just, it, it really kind of opens up a can of worms. And <laughs> sorry, this, this, this is just funny from Paul. They said, if I can't have sex in heaven, then I'm not interested. <laughs> anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, do you have any uh, last things to say? Uh, um, I guess just on that, I don't, I don't really see a contradiction in what Jesus is saying because the angels that are serving God are not having sex and they're not having sex with women. Um, but, you know, did they have but these? They when did they? Have, well, well, I'm sorry. I'm interjecting when I'm trying no, to No, I this. mean, and actually, I do think, I mean, there are now this is going to open it up and everybody's going to go crazy when I say this because it's really going to sound crazy. But I mean, girl, you probably already know about all this stuff but you know because <laughs> you were in like that kind of environment but i mean i still think there's spirits that approach women and men to have sex with them and i mean that's in yeah i've i've like talked to several women who have experienced being um accosted and raped by spirits so um you know, it's, but I, it, it, that may not be the, that I don't think that's the same thing that was happening at that time because it seemed like right. it was something of a physical nature that was actually producing um, some type of being. So. That, uh, I'm not going to lie. When you say that sort of thing, I'm sure most of my audience are going, what the hell? But I actually, <laughs> my mom, she, she's, she's told me all about these sort of things, not with her, but how there are spirits that can, you know, manipulate you and I guess do naughty time with you. Know, all, all kind of crazy, not no offense, but all kind of crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, no offense. <laughs> okay. Um, well, um, anyway, this has been a fun conversation, Gur. Thanks for talking with me. Oh, yeah. And uh, I appreciate you. I always enjoy it when you come on and, uh, yeah, so you're always welcome here, and uh, I hope you have a good night. And uh, what time are you going on South Stream? Did you say? I think it's at nine thirty. I mean, you well, your time. I think it's ten thirty. Let me see. What what's the name of his channel? I'm subscribed to him, but I can't remember. Um, evidence and reasons. That's right, evidence and reasons. I'll see yep. if I can find it, and I'll I'll, I'll post it against my own better judgment. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I, I don't. I don't mind because you know if you're kind enough to come in here and also let me on your stream, the least I can do is kind of expose some of, uh, share some of your stuff. Cool. So let me go ahead and post this. Rebecca will be here. Okay. All right. Well, uh, you yeah. have a good rest of the night, and y'all have a fun time. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye bye. All right. Well, that was that was fun. That was not supposed to be part of the stream, but you know, it's Rebecca. I gotta have her on. Um, let's see. Open room in just a few minutes. Okay. Uh.
Okay, I will be right back. Mrs. Mania is home, so I must say hello to her. Uh, so yeah, I will be right back. I think I can play music now. Let me see if that works. Uh, let's see here. Let's do lo-fi. Damn it, Jay. Hold on, Jay. I'll be right back. <laughs>
Okay, okay, I am back. I am back. What's going on, Jay? Thank you for being patient if you're still there. Yeah, I'm still here. Um, first of all, how do you like my meme? I created it all by myself. It looked it looked like it, it was um tasking. <laughs> <laughs> It took so long. It took me like five it like hours. It was a hard, yeah, I was gonna say it. it looked like it was a hard, hard job. <laughs> over Genius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is too right easy. Up, right up, right up there with phrases. Right <laughs> hey, that's just rude. <laughs> Except I think you actually make yours. I think he just steals his. Oh, that's probably true. That's probably true. Anyways, uh, how you doing? Uh, what what type of nonsense did you want to reply to or if any oh no i i i are you talking about like with what you and rebecca were talking about or just just some kind of nonsense that might have well, been specifically with, with rebecca but if there's anything else about anyone else well I, well I can see i mean i would i would have challenged her with like well i brought it up that there's kind of a conflict with god not knowing the future when it comes to jeremiah one versus five I knew you before I formed you in your womb and set you apart as being saved as a prophet of the Lord or something to that effect. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when it comes to open theists, uh, I, there's actually, I, I feel like there's a ton of issues with, with all that, especially given what you said and then prophecies and all that stuff. But I, I just didn't feel like asking. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, it was a good conversation, but... I, think some of, I don't think any of your questions were really hardball questions, nor did they need to be. So, what a big deal. With Rebecca, I, well, I'm like this with most people. I try to be pretty calm and collected, and it just depends on what the topic is. I, like, when it comes to Nephilim stuff, it's like, okay, that, like, where do I begin? <laughs> well, the Nephilim, well, like I, I, I mentioned it, somebody else mentioned it too, because they mentioned somebody, uh, somebody's theory on the Nephilim being a, another, like a, like a born tribe, but, Nephilim are mentioned again in Numbers. When when uh, oh, I did not know that. Yeah, when they're when they're when Moses when the when Israel is basically on the borders of getting ready to enter into the land of Canaan, they send in spies to check the land out to check the area out, and they come back. They send 12, 12 spies. Greetings again. Oh, uh, ten, yeah, go ahead, Jay. Yeah, and ten of those spies come back and they're saying, yeah, it's it's truly a land of milk and flowing with milk and honey. But there's some badass motherfuckers over there, and it specifically <laughs> references they've got Nephilim over there, man. They've got Nephilim over there, and God gets irritated with them because they come back and say, "There's no way that we can fight them. There's no way we can fight and win, even though God is promising, you know, promising the people through Moses and Aaron. Yeah, don't worry. This is land. I promise you. If you go up against them, I'll deliver them. You'll be fine." But they're like, "Fuck that. No, what we're seeing is entirely different." So God gets angry with them. And um, so a lot of people ended up not being able to go into the promised land, except for two spies, two spies and the, and the tribe that that's the 12 tribes okay. are kind of like representatives of leaders of the tribes of Israel. Okay. I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah. I would have, I wish <laughs> you, I wish you would have started with the Nephilim stuff, man. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't, well, I think she had mentioned it, or I, I can't remember, but as soon as the topic came up, I was like, wait a second, do you actually believe that angels came down to earth and, you know, fucked with the women? I told you, man, it's supernatural, man. They take, they take out a family <laughs> yeah, vessel, that they do some, <laughs> and then they, they take off, they go, hey, have fun with the monster I just put in your belly. Oh, by the way, that thing tears up holy hell when it comes out. Well, that's what I commented. I was like, I had a wet dream once. Was I spiritually raped? Like, <laughs> you um, you ever clapped angel cheeks, Jay? Have all I those, what? all the sparkly dust that flies off of them with every clap. Is, <laughs> it's insane. That's so that, that's Don't get it in one. your nose though, because it lingers for a couple of days. And cause, you, you're really you, sneezing and everything. It's that, bad. That's what gives you the happy thoughts. Didn't you know that, Leo? Yeah. Oh yeah. You can't get rid that of that glitter. glitter. It all makes sense now. <laughs> but there's definitely a withdrawal period of major depression for about a day and a half after, so watch out for that. Small price had, to pay. I did a Nephilim one time on a stripper. She clapped a lot of angel dust in the air, too. <laughs> Bad joke. Bad joke. <laughs> no, uh, Jay, I just saw uh, your comment here. Uh, do a Jill. 
Yeah, Jill, Jill has done this to, um, he's done this to Brojo a few times, where Brojo would have to, he would take a break, he'd be doing an epic long stream or whatever, or hang out, and he would leave for a minute, and Jill would be in there, and then Jill would start proselytizing to everyone while, while Brojo was away. Oh, God. That's, yeah. yeah. He's like, I take over his, I took over his channel, I got to preach the word of God on an atheist channel. You know, like, oh, he's not an atheist, he's, he's pantheist, but either way, so, uh, well, it's funny because I know one time I was on one of LPP streams and he had he had left and it was just me and two other people there. And I was since I was the first one in, I was on the left side of the screen and I thought about doing that. Like, yeah, I'm taking over this bitch. But I was like, nah, that, that's just yeah. that's a low blow. <laughs> start, just, start, just crack open a chapter from Richard Dawkins book or you know, <laughs> Hitchens, why oh, but, by, by, the, by the way, Orge, I forgot to tag you on Twitter. Um, I don't know what time zone you live in, but at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, I will be pre uh, premiering a response to a Standing for Truth and Jason Lyle on the Distant Starlight problem, if you're interested. Oh, that should be fun, yeah. W uh, what day? Today. Oh, oh yeah, I, I've okay. got that linked, but let me see if I can find it again and post it again. Yeah, 8 p.m. Central, it'll be 9 p.m. Yeah. Eastern, 7 Mountain, 6 Eastern, or uh, 6 uh, Pacific. Nice. nice. Yeah, if I can be there. Two, two a.m. Two a.m. GMT. <laughs> At least you get thumbs up. On me. <laughs> Just in case Nathan's listening, which he's probably that not. Narrows, he's probably that, in bed. That narrows it down. <laughs> so, um, did anybody here see the uh the discussion Pine Creek and uh, Robert Price had on Pine Creek's channel today? I did oh. not. Oh, I didn't, but my brother, my brother said he was Price was making some interesting claims about. <laughs> Interesting is one way to put them. Yeah, yeah, that's one way to put them. Um, uh, I'm not going to reveal too much. Just, just go and watch it. It's, it's um, it's interesting. Yeah, I think I've, I think I've seen that guy before. I think I've seen him on videos before because he's a, he's a Robert Price. Oh yeah, yeah, he's been on a Myth Vision podcast with Derek several times. Yeah, he's like, I mean, I think he's been on Aaron Raj's channel. I mean, he's been all over the place. But well, when, when just, it came up, when it was in the when I, I was there for the for a little bit, I was in the live chat, and, and the question was being asked whether or not he was a racist. And I looked up Robert Price's bio, and I said, "1954, 1954 in Mississippi." I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's all you got to use as justification." Yes, 1954 and 1954 grew up in the, in the south. Yeah, grew up in the south probably. in pre-civil rights era, right, right you when the can, movement was take, starting. Oh, oh you buddy, can take, you can take the oh, boy buddy. out of Mississippi. You can take the boy. You can take the boy out of Mississippi burning. You cannot take the Mississippi burning out of the boy. <laughs> what I found in interesting about Price is, like, if you ever listen to him when he talks theology, he's really, really into narrative storytelling and listening to his political views he almost transfers that into the real world he kept referencing like star wars gone with the wind he kept referencing all these stories to to tie it into how these storytelling narratives were actually influencing his real life and i thought that was interesting mm -hmm. that's a thing i've noticed with conservatives well i think There's it's because he's a mythicist but yeah well I, the, the thing with me is i've noticed a lot of interesting patterns with conservatives and the way that they talk and the things that they talk about and all that stuff. It's, it really is quite interesting indeed. Yeah. I don't know much about this. I don't know much about the politics, but my brother gave me just a little hint. He said, yeah, something to do. He said something about January 6th and one of his claims was just not, but it was like, mm, okay. Yeah. He went, the uh, election was stolen route. I was like, whoa, <laughs> like, Oh no. Yeah. Oh, did he? Oh, he thinks it was actually stolen. Yeah, he does. Oh, okay. Yeah, I ch I chimed in for about 15, 20 minutes. The whole time I thought that uh, Pine Creek was talking to Mike Lindell. <laughs> so bad. Uh, well, I'm not. I'm not even trying to be funny either. Like seriously. My one of my fluffy pillows. Ah. I, I I thought it. I I I thought I thought he was talking to fucking Mike Lindell. That's. This dude has uh, is so fucking drunk on the conspiracy juice. It's not even funny. Yeah. Sorry, I went missing in action for a minute. 
Pokemon while you're gone. I bet you go missing in action a lot, don't you? <laughs> More than I want to say, because it's so depressing. Go. <laughs> so, Ger, what, what, what was your favorite part of it of the the uh, Rebecca interview? Uh, there's quite a bit there. One, I did not know she was an open theist. I thought that was interesting. Mm-hmm. I had a feeling um, she was. That's why. Wait, hold on, Gur. What's open theism? I I'm drawing a blank right now, buddy. I, I need help. About to ask that actually. <laughs> yeah, like where a guy doesn't know the future, basically. He's not. Omniscient. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Basically, God is not omniscient, and he doesn't well, know everything. Is it that God isn't omniscient, or is it that they define omniscience in a different way? I actually don't know. That's a genuine question. Mm, that'd be a question for her. You know what? Let me well, just I, look it up. I got. <laughs> I got Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy's definition. Open theism is the thesis that because God loves us and desires that we freely choose to reciprocate yep. his love, he has made his knowledge of and plans for the future conditional upon our, our actions. Yep. Though omniscient, God, God does not know what we will freely do in the future. So what, what they would just uh, – I'm assuming they would just take omniscience to, in, to, to include what somebody knows. But since there are actions that are the, results, the, the result of free decisions made and they occur in the future, God's knowledge, which contains only what you currently know, um, God's knowledge base thereby would not contain those pieces of information. And thus it wouldn't necessarily refute the idea of omniscience with respect to God. Yeah, I think they treat him like a really good calculator. But he can be wrong, but his probabilities are, like, really high. Yeah, uh, yeah cause what I was bringing up is I, was Jeremiah 1.5, and that one, that's one that's been used before, is before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. So right there, he's kind of declaring that he knew right. someone before they were formed. And there's also the jars of clay verse where it says, I have made some jars, jars, it's the jars of wrath narrative that's in the New Testament. And every single prophecy. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Gur, do you know if uh, Rebecca is a Molinist by chance? I would but, suspect so, but I didn't. don't know if she's ever said of, to yeah, you. Yeah, a lot of Molinists are. A lot of open theists are Molinists. Aren't I, well, I, 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 I would almost. Kind of similar. I, I, I would <laughs> almost think that open theism would commit you. To, to, to Molinism. I, 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 I don't know how. I think it would be hard to argue God's omniscience if, if you weren't, that he has middle knowledge. He knows what, what might happen, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, yeah. under a, any given, in any given yeah. um, contingent future, but he doesn't know what, what the future, so to speak, will be. Yeah. I hate oh, to okay. sound oh, ignorant. Oh, okay. Sorry, Ger. What is a Molinist? So a Molinist is somebody who thinks that God has this sort of middle knowledge that he doesn't necessarily know what will happen, but he knows what could happen in any possible world such that whatever does happen, having been contained in that prior set, is still contained in a sense within God's knowledge, and thus you can retain the concept of omniscience. It's just the ability to allow for God to be omniscient while at the same time retaining this idea of true human freedom and the ability for us via our free choices to um, build, I guess you could say, the contingent future. Yeah. That makes sense. Whereas, okay, a, compa- thank whereas you. a compatibilist, a compatibilist doesn't even hold to that because a compatibilist tries to reconcile free will with determinism. In, in a is sense, wafflers. yeah. It's waffle. This is off topic, but uh, as far as uh, price goes, or that is true. Price, I literally just saw it on Twitter. All three yeah. of them said that they don't plan on ever being on a stream or hosting him ever again. What did he do? I'm completely in the dark. Well, I'll look, all I'm going to say is just go watch the stream, okay? Okay. I, if if what I said earlier doesn't capture it, then you don't know anything about who Mike Lindell is or some of the things he says. But when I <laughs> for the fifteen ish, twenty ish minutes that I was watching. Robert Price said, I literally thought that fucking Doug, that Pine Creek had fucking Mike Lindell on his channel. That's, it, I mean, at that point, if you know, you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll, back up, I'll, I'll, know. No, I'll back up Doug on this because, like, Robert Price is a two time PhD in theology. Like, he's not a PhD in politics. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, if we're going to, like, yep. he, he is a wealth of knowledge to go to. In theology, that is correct. I, so, I, yeah, I, a, but yeah, the thing is, is that people, scholar. people like Dr. Josh and Casey and GE, um, 
are, are going to agree with that. They're just going to say, they're just going to say that, look, I don't agree with his political position, his positions. In fact, I think that they're extreme and dangerous. And so I do not want to platform that person. It would be, it's no different than I think that Lawrence Krauss is a legitimate cosmologist, you know, theoretical astrophysicist. I think he's got a wealth of knowledge in the subject, but I would never host him on my channel because of the credible accusations he has against him. And it's not, right. it's not an attempt at discrediting the person. It's simply saying that there are other actions that make it such that I don't want to platform that person well you know what i jaywalked once and so gurry should probably kick well i think jaywalking is a little different than like <laughs> say in the case of lawrence krauss you know being credibly accused of sexual assault. i mean That's find, fair find somebody who's perfect at everything like you're not gonna what, what does this do have it? to do about perfection i mean let's let's take um sean carroll for instance as a, as a physicist doesn't have any accusations of sexual assault or anything like that is the guy perfect uh -huh. no well nobody's asking for perfect people no, I, I'm is, he, yeah. is he an expert that, in his that, field? Yes. Yeah. There out. are people that have certain moral convictions that they want to adhere that they want to adhere to, and that includes um, not platforming certain people, albeit no, even I, credible professionals in their field, for certain ethical reasons. And I just don't think there's anything wrong with that. That's their you know that's their whatever if they want to do it's a shame because uh ge is a big mythicist and robert price is in the same camp so like they would definitely be mutually beneficial but, but the funny thing is i would i would wonder if any of these guys before. i wonder if any of these guys would um stop platforming richard carrier who's also had been credibly accused of sexual assault uh, jay what, what what was your question or what were you saying jay oh it's not important don't worry about it Okay, your volume was just low, and I, I heard you say something, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. Okay, so I'm okay. I, should I play that stream? What? No, it's, I mean, it's you, long. You, 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 yeah, I mean, if you want to play parts of it, you can. Yeah, but... Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, just yeah, yeah a stupid way to phrase it. And is there a particular part I should play? Anything? Is there a timestamp? No, it's the I whole don't thing. have any timestamps. It's, it's the whole, the whole thing. thing. What I would do? I love well, Lindell. I would he makes me laugh. laugh. I would, I would, I would scroll through it because he's on uh, Pine Creek's on for a while before Price gets in there. So I would just, you know, you just kind of scan. If you do want to look at it a little bit, just go to where Robert Price actually shows up. Okay, okay, I think I'll do that. I'm not saying I'm gonna necessarily play it, but I'm just gonna look for it. Real quick. I think I might almost do a review of this on myself. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't. My channel, just, I don't know. Just, it's all politics, dude. Like, uh, yeah, I know. That's... I thought we we're gonna kind of talk about Rebecca and what was going on with that. Oh yeah, yeah. It's 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 whatever. Yeah, whatever you want to talk about. Um, this is a girl stream. It could go in any direction. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Inside all inside religion out. is politics. It's, it's kind of like Robert Price, man. It could go anywhere. You you don't know where it's gonna go next. <laughs> we we do need Danny in this stream. I agree. That would help a lot. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I haven't talked to Danny in a while, so I don't know where he's I know, at. your life hasn't changed in a while. Well, because of it. Uh, yeah. I talked to Danny, I talked to Danny a couple, I think over a week ago, and I was, I was at the dog park, and I was talking to him about, um... Did he say anything about no. me? <laughs> no. Did he get fat? No, it was after that. It was, a, it was after, I listened to the video. It was his conversation between him and Tone Loke, uh, and it was, it was, the, the conversation is hilarious. <laughs> it's just like like Tone Loke is just like you're being evasive. Oh, this guy's deflecting. He's the most slippery motherfucker. You are basically the most slippery motherfucker. And I'm like, giving <clears throat> you everything to work with, and you guys are still missing it. And it was fucking hilarious. And and when I talked to Danny about it, Danny goes, Yeah, I wasn't even really into the conversation all that much. I was doing something else. And it was just like, okay, was <laughs> none, none of those guys. None of those guys and, like talking with like Jack Angstrike or Danny or uh, you know Detroyer. Yeah. Or any, they, or any like, they, talking, like, they don't like. Look, was like really focused on getting him into local atheism or global atheist, and and Danny was just like swatting that shit away like it was nothing. He's like, well, if it comes to the God of the Bible, that I'm an atheist. And when it comes to other God concepts, those I would be probably more agnostic to, since they don't, you know, since you know, we have to kind of flush those concepts out in order for me to come to a conclusion whether one way or another, whether or not I can believe those to be true or not. And he did not like that at all. He's like, I'm not asking you about what you know, sir. I'm asking you about what you believe. And I'm like, yeah, but you're already coming from a position to look that you believe that everyone knows who God is based on Romans 1. It's not being a disingenuous cunt. Womp womp. 
I remember once I was watching a discussion and Jay Robin said, now give me, you have to give me a non-question begging argument that God doesn't exist. <laughs> and in your argument, you have to presuppose that my position is correct. <laughs> that, that's essentially because he was saying, you, 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 you can't do the opposite of what I'm doing since you claim what I'm doing is wrong. You can't do the opposite and presuppose that God doesn't exist. So you give, give me a non and it's just like you, you're literally saying, give me an give me an argument against my position that presupposes my position. Yeah. Why why do presuppositionalists <laughs> never get the fact that we don't presuppose anything else exists? Like I, I don't I don't presuppose unicorns exist. I don't presuppose leprechauns. I don't presuppose anything else exists. It's always the 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 uh, null hypothesis is not existing. Right? I, I I would say that I presuppose that there is an external reality which exists. Yeah, I mean, you do have to presuppose reality. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that's like that's the contingent factor of I all have, everything. But I, have I, pres I presuppose that my reason can be used to arrive at accurate conclusions about the way the world is. I'm talking about yeah. now nouns, like uh, people, place, things. Like God is a, th a person. Like a unicorn's a thing. Like reality, I can't, you'd have to like spend an hour even defining what the hell that means. What reality? Yeah, I I just define physical reality. I I just define it as the natural world, the totality of physical space time reality and all which is extended through it. Thanks for reminding me, girl. I've got to dislike the stream. <laughs> <laughs> well, Leo, that that's Stay acceptable, but I think BS is right in that you can expand upon that and go down a rabbit hole, right? So, sure. Not if you're just when you're getting into that. reality is reality and move on from there yeah uh, uh, why well, wait i don't i guess i don't know what that means to because you're, you're, that reality is reality you're gonna have uh it's the objective. objective yeah the it's objective a, versus the subjective problem. problem well what, what's the what's the problem there brain in the vat what, what, no, yeah, what, that, brain in the vat. But that, that wouldn't really be a problem well, of like objective versus subjective i am all about brain in the vat. have you ever had a hallucination before i guess it would depend on like not working I can hear you. Your mic is oh, okay. Is low it depends on how you define hallucination. Have you seen something that other people haven't seen? Um, like in what sense? Do you know what a hallucination is, Leo? Y yes, I do. Um, it, there, there's multiple different hey, senses Corey. in which okay, I can, a visual, I can, a visual hey. hallucination. I that still does not help me out at all. Like un, under drugs or like you know, I mean, like what what are we talking? About? Because I yeah, mean, I've been I've yeah, been on LSD. Matter. I've done shrooms. I've um, seen like colors and shapes. But like, have I ever seen a physical object there yeah. that nobody else has been able to see? In that or, sense, no. I I don't think I've ever had that experience. Okay, uh, use an auditory. It actually is a translation of my name, Titan. Use an auditory hallucination then, because you know you're going to say that audio exists in the reality because sound waves. But you can also manufacture sound in your head, mm -hmm. right? Sure. Yeah. That's that's what well, I'm think... talking about: subjective versus objective. Fundamentally, fundamentally, you run into the issue of the problem of induction. You, you run into presupposing that your senses are reliable. Well, okay. See, now, this is the thing, is that the problem of induction is not like this huge problem that people make it out to be. Hume you no. know, pointed out the gotta, problem hey, of induction. Hold on, hold on, hold but up, but the, all it shows is that we're, we're, when it comes to using induction, induction rests on a set of presuppositions. That so, the, and, sure. and that those presuppositions Leo. are themselves based in induction, the way that we experience the, the world day to day. going down this rabbit hole proves that we presuppose reality to avoid this rabbit hole, which is the whole point of the conversation. I, uh, no, no, I don't know what that means. I, 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 I let, you're proving I, the you're proving the point. Is what, what I'm point? Saying. What the, I don't know what point is trying to be made here. I, reality yes. is not that easy to define. <laughs> I think yeah, it's fairly exactly. easy to define what reality is. Ah, uh, Lord. Thank you, Orgy. Somebody understands what well, I'm saying. Let me, let me just ask this if this is in the same vein. But, uh, Leo, uh, so let's just say you are a brain and a bat and everything that you're seeing, experiencing, whatever, uh, is actually the case. Would that still fall under your umbrella of how you define uh, reality? Wait. So, are are, are you are, are you presenting a Cartesian demon scenario, like the the, the same type that's used to draw the Similar, distinction between yeah. internalism and externalism, where Simulation. you're a brain and a where, where uh, something like that, you're you're being falsely 
tricked into believing something, but the thing that you're being falsely tricked into believing is actually a true thing. Uh, yeah, I guess in so many words, yeah. Uh, where did Jay go? Okay. But uh, yeah, um, th because like I, I tend to agree that like reality is what it is. The totality of, you know, all the atoms, quarks, uh, matter, energy is what we have here in the known universe, right? Um, but what I think Orgy and BS was saying was like, how would you define such things maybe? It, I'm just trying to. Add well, then to I would need to know what they mean. Like, what aspect of reality are we wanting to define? Because I'm understanding Again, what they're saying to be like, how would you define reality point, as a whole? The yeah. fact that this conversation can continue being recur recursive like this is why we don't go down these rabbit holes and we just assume something like reality. I go down yeah, these rabbit holes all the time. Because we can <laughs> travel this path and we get nowhere along on the original conversation. I get yeah. lots of places when I when I have these discussions. It's on great metaphysical discussion. Is the it, point that you skip there. If I may. Yeah, go ahead, King. At my age, there are some things you have to presuppose. Strictly for this point right here, this solves the whole argument. You have to choose in your own mind. This table is real. I feel it, I can taste it, I can touch something, I can see it. At some point you have to choose whether your mind is reliable or not. Once you decide your mind is reliable, then you have to go with the realities that you see, taste, touch, feel. If you go any further than that, that's when you get into the real presupposition Jeez, I can't even speak today. Supposition. Of like a god or something like that. You cannot see, feel, taste, or touch that. So the reality of what's in front of me, I have to say, okay, I realize intellectually this may be all a brain and a bat. Okay, fine. But if I am, the easiest choice is to say, but what I feel, touch, taste, and see is real. Therefore, I will live my life to the point that this is my reality. Anything further is guesswork. Yeah. That was all. So, sounds like quite the empiricist position. No, the reason I, I bring it up yep. isn't so much to this harp on the brain in a vat. It's more to focus on like things like mental illness. So if, say, if you have a, a bipolar with psychotic features or a schizophrenic, they lose touch with what you would call reality. And myself, I am bipolar. And so um, I've been in places where I cannot trust myself, the subjective, to correctly interpret the objective and so my so you realize that so you can still work around it to some I, degree i had <clears throat> sorry i had the uh, long journey to get through to get there but before i interpreted it all as spiritualism and it was just a re reinforcing narrative fed by the uh, christianity and their worldview and so for everything i was experiencing i had a verse to back it up and so uh, this is why i push back so hard on on theism because it actually fosters the mentally ill to go farther down their path and and potentially harm themselves or others according to the objective reality i have argued this same thing before if i were hearing voices everybody would say oh well you suffer from clinical depression and you're basically autistic with they call it uh, schizotypal personality disorder, but mm -hmm. if I was a child, they'd call me um, Asperger's. Autism. And I believe I see things more clearly than most people because I don't have the societal norms in me. I see what I see, and that's what I classify as this is reality. But the Christian walks along and goes, well, I heard God today, but nobody says, have you seen a psychologist recently? That's so frustrating. You know, but they're allowed to hear voices. You aren't, because when you hear voices, all of a sudden, oh well, you got an issue. But it's the same, yeah. same thing. <laughs> do, you, daughter, do you guys think that those people are literally hearing voices in their head? Possibly. Sometimes. When they say that they spoke to God or that they saw God. Well, do you think that like they actually like, saw a person? Okay. Or do you think that they're a, speaking more in like a, a, a sort of an ethereal sense? A, a perfect movie for that is uh, God. What's the name of that? A Beautiful Mind. No, I was thinking of the one with. Um, mm -hmm. Matthew McConaughey and not Bill Pullman, the other one, Bill Paxton, 
where he thought he heard the angels telling him to kill the demons and he had to go get a weapon. and That, that scares the hell out of me. This is why Christians scare me. If an angel tells him to kill demons, well, great, I'm one of the targets. <laughs> yeah. But to, yeah. Uh, to expand on Leo, your point, um, not everything, delusions aren't always hallucinations. Delusions could be in a sense where you, you feel like you're being fed thoughts from God, not necessarily hearing audible voices, but he's influencing your thinking per se. Does that make sense? I mean, sure, but I, I just don't think that that's intrinsically harmful or that that necessarily leads one to having false beliefs. Until he tells you to kill somebody. Well, yeah, but like, how often do we hear about that? Or yourself. Like, we, we, don't, uh, we just I, don't hear I, about I, that. I don't know. Let's first, make the government kill gays. I'll tell you first-hand experience. <laughs> I, I was convinced I was supposed to be the Antichrist. And I was ready to go march out and do whatever God told me, put my own conscience on hold, and be prepared to do his will over my will. His will be done, not my will be done. And that's very dangerous because I was mistaking my psychopathy for the very voice of God. And then yeah, I'm, not, I'm sure I'm not the only one this has ever happened to. I'm just not willing to commit myself to this idea that like relig religions are intrinsically harmful based on anecdotal experiences. Uh, more, well, harmful, okay. more harmful than not. Nothing's 100% harmful. But right. um, I'd say that it does produce more harm than good. It most definitely has potential to cause more harm than good. Yeah, I guess I just... Believe it undoubtedly uh, does more harm. Anything that's authoritative, the person in charge is the person telling you what to do, that creates some possible danger. Well, it, this is something that I told Rebecca earlier, is uh, the belief in God, an individual believing in God uh, in the isolated scenario, it, I, I don't see any harm with that, but... It's, it seems to be the case where most people who believe in God in, try to impose the morality via government uh, through, through governmental changes, uh, like, you know, stripping away rights or not even granting rights to different groups of people and minorities and stuff like that. So I, I feel like, like King said, it, it has the p potential to cause more harm, but in and of itself, believing in God, I don't think necessarily does. Well, let me one thing, Carol. Let me put um, it this way. I actually like, do. Uh, belief in itself can still cause harm. Uh, for instance, I may believe in Jesus Christ or whatever, mm -hmm. just for a hypothetical, but me, somebody acknowledging that I have a belief may make them believe certain things and may make them go even deeper on their beliefs. My actions alone may not hurt anybody but my beliefs can reinforce somebody uh, else yeah it can posit somebody else's belief it can uh give someone else a reason to believe in something yeah. so when i say beliefs are dangerous i do believe they are i don't care in any shape or form I because know. We're, we live in a society. Any beliefs that someone believes has to... It depends on what those beliefs are. And based off of those beliefs, we can um, see if those are good or bad actions. And that could depend on any belief, not just a religion. Right. Uh, this is how I put it. I always say ideas lead to beliefs, lead to action. So if you can keep something in a belief and somebody can keep it to themselves, fine. But we all know that's not how Christianity works. It's about right. spreading the belief yeah, like a virus. I, I agree with that. And so actions are what hurts people. Beliefs by themselves, not so much until they decide to act upon them. Then we have a problem. Um, Leo, are you saying that basically like just, just the belief in God itself or religion in and of itself is it intrinsically harmful? Like how, where would you? Yeah, yeah. It's a, I, I think that it's much deeper than that. And I think that most sociologists would say and have already shown that it's much deeper than that. Like even what we see in the United States, uh, a lot of that can be attributed to um, religious people, but that's because those people are also right wing. So we know that there's a connection there mm -hmm. and it's, 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 it's just that it's much more cultural 
and the the religion is one cultural aspect that's used to justify adhering to the beliefs but may not necessarily be the source of the beliefs it's just a method through which a mode through which the beliefs that are had are justified you know uh we we, we should be illegal for a woman to get an abortion because that's a life and it was created by god they they say that to justify this belief that they already have that we <clears throat> should write legislation <clears throat> that is designed to oppress uh, essentially, a, a take take away you know autonomy away from women. So I I, I think Fair that uh, what I would say is that um, religion is extrinsically harmful, and it, the point that's that's been made is that many beliefs can be extrinsically harmful. But I don't think that there's many beliefs. Obviously, there are some, but I don't think that there's there's many beliefs out there that are intrinsically harmful. At least none that are commonly held by people today. Let me ask you guys, like, um, not too long ago, Holy Kool-Aid had a debate with inspiring philosophy about is Christianity mm -hmm. dangerous or harmful or whatever. And I don't like the way that was worded, but um, what I would say is that, like, think of your the worst Christian you can think of and just like, okay, it's a Steven Anderson or it's a somebody who's promoting harm, right? Mm -hmm. And then you'll ask other Christians about them and they will be like, well, they're reading the Bible wrong. That's mainly their, their, their go-to kind of excuse. But yeah. at, the, at the same time, we'll go and just put a Bible in every hotel room. We'll give Bibles to the homeless. We throw Bibles around like they're drugs and just free Bibles for everybody. While they acknowledge that these Bibles can be used in a wrong manner to to cause harm to other people is they still have no problem handing them out like candy. Does that make sense? Hmm. Well, I mean, yeah, but we do the same thing with cars. I mean, think of the damage that you could do with cars and yeah, you could just, if you've got the money at least, you could just walk onto a dealership and buy as many of them as you want. The, the you point that I'm making is that I don't think most Christians out there are reading their Bible and going, yeah, let's go stone a bunch of people. I just, um, sure, that people use, well, yeah, but the, it, it, Westboro Baptist Church is not in any way even in remotely IFB. close to representing uh, even the majority of Christianity within specifically the United States, let alone Catholic North America pedophilia. or the whole, the whole yeah, you, you guys world. are arguing the exception makes the rule, and that's kind of the no, opposite no, no. of the case, right? I mean, um, I, I want to throw this out there. I mean, do we okay. bring out one, Nazis and Stalin no, one, and atheism? Here? I mean, if you want to bring up cars, should we have a license to read the Bible? No. Then why do we have a license to drive a car? Because there's more to operating a vehicle than there is to reading a book. In fact, it would be perceived that the ability to operate a motor vehicle can do a more immediate harm than reading the Bible can, which seems to support the point that I am trying to make. And that is why you have to have a license to drive a vehicle, but not to read the Bible. You were just the one who was getting mad about right-wing politics, and you think that all of their politics about anti-gay stuff is not coming from the Bible, for the most part? No, I think the Bible is used to justify the hatred. I, I don't think the bigotry is because they're religious. The re their religion is used to justify their bigotry. Take... They're bigoted for deeper cultural reasons than merely their religion. That's I mean... the point that I'm making, is this is much more sociologically nuanced than just they're religious and so they're bigots and so they believe this. That's just you can't... way more nuanced than no, that. You Leo, can't... I'm you agreeing can't... with you. No, you can't separate 2,000 years of Christian culture from their culture. Yeah, I'm sorry. absolutely we can. Why? Christianity is absolutely nothing like it was today, like it was 2,000 years ago. But it, it's been a major cultural force for the last 2,000 years, and you're saying it's the culture. Yeah, so has, so has Islam. I'm going to have to agree with And too. Sure. Most, <laughs> They're throwing most, them off a roof. Muslims, most Muslims around the world aren't doing the bad things. But the fundamental ones are, aren't they? Yes, and that's bad, and it's maybe they shouldn't. That, that, maybe they need a license to read a Bible or a Quran. No, because I don't think that's it's just it's culturally it's deeper than that. The religion well, is one tool that they utilize yes. to justify the cultural, you, the, these cultural actions that they have that are very you, deeply you rooted. Be judging the group based on uh, a statistic or something like that, right? And there's obvious flaws with that. You replace Christian with black. And say that you know black people cause more crimes, therefore black people, blah 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 blah, are just intrinsically more violent. Argument. Like, but yeah, 
Yeah, I, I mean, the, you, you, the, the, the framework of your argument. Jewish people are, are often in the financial industry because Jewish people are intrinsically exactly. more greedy. Are you know? people born Christian? <laughs> Is it a race? It's not a race. Oh, okay. No, but the, but That's the, not the point. The, the I mean, concept. but you're comparing it to races. Oh, it's no, black, well, well, Jews. Well, yeah. Well, well, we're, what, let's oh, if you're born a Nazi, that's an ideology. Compared. Christianity is an ideology. What's being compared is that there is a, t a general stereotype that, be can, that can be associated with a particular demographic stereotype. of people. That's what I was meant. Um, and it doesn't matter whether this is a demographic that somebody ends up adopting through cultural reasons or whether it's intrinsic to them genetically. What's what the, the point that's being made is that there are particular stereotypes that can be associated with certain demographics. And what is being said is that it's not necessarily being because they're a part of that demographic that certain stereotypes might be fulfilled. There could be deeper cultural reasons. So when we say that it's like saying, oh yeah, we well, you know black people commit more crime per capita than white people, so black people are more intrinsically violent. Well, no, there could be deeper reasons for why we might see crime higher in the African American community than we do in other communities. No, this is and what that can I was... be for various other environmental reasons. Just like the reason that violence can be certain forms of bigotry are more stringently adhered to by people who happen to be um well not just religious but conservatively religious. And that's the big thing is it's not just religion, it's conservative religiosity. Um that does not necessarily mean that the religiosity is the source of the bigotry. That that's the only point that I'm making is that it's just there are deeper cultural roots to that that extend beyond the religiosity and that which the religiosity is used in a social context to justify the bigotry. Um, Thank you, gentlemen. One moment. I, I have to drive out. Got a family issue. You guys rock, Gur. As always, thank you so much for letting me join oh, you. Yeah, I absolutely. solved the problem. No more reverb. <laughs> Bye, <laughs> Alex. Bye, Alex. Have it a good is... one. And yeah. damn it, I missed you, Lisa. Lisa I'm I so will sorry. be right back. I need to grab a beer. Okay. Have a good one, guys. Take care. Um, what I was oh, trying dang. to and what I was trying to hammer Rebecca on is I brought up the abomination stuff in Leviticus, which is and we know what Rebecca's mindset is. She's already excused away babies being drowned and babies being stabbed and it desensitizes uh, like people this stuff desensitizes people and then she's tried to skip over oh that's old law then i bring up romans 120 that was never addressed but it's not just old testament that hates the gays it's romans 120 through yes, 130 yeah. and he says god gave them over to their sinful heart lust to degrade themselves with one another lesbians and, and gays and it's not an Old Testament, New Testament thing. It's a God hates the fucking gays thing. And then if you love God, you don't approve of the gays either. Like, this is so easy. It's not. Yeah, the, 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 thing, the thing that gets me about Christians, right? And one of the things that, one of the things that led me away from Christianity is that I read the fucking Bible. <laughs> of oh, all <laughs> things. <laughs> I, I do want to say hello to Wildheart. Uh, what's going on? How you doing? How you, you look? You're looking good. Cheers, thank you very much. Yeah, you are. You are looking <laughs> good, Wildheart. So <laughs> I, I'm working on my tribute to my dad. I just needed a break because I just recorded the taps, and it doesn't matter what context I hear taps in it just always breaks my heart because it means somebody died serving our country so anyway i just needed a break but that's ho <laughs> hopefully that's yeah, going to come out tonight are, are you are you uh you said you're doing that tonight lisa Hopefully, I'm going to put it out tonight. I've got one more thing. The the TAPS, TAPS was the second to last thing I needed to put in. And uh, so, if I can get myself together, uh then I'll do the um, the one thing left that I have to do uh, to put it all together and get it out tonight. But uh, 
you know, um, still pretty raw, but you know, I'm, I'm well, if you, you know, I'm not telling you what to do, but if you need to take more time before you know going into this sort of stuff, then. I mean, don't feel like you have to force through it and just pick yourself up and go at it. Like, it's nice to take a break. Especially, you know, dealing with a loss. And all of us dumbasses. (laughs) 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 But, yeah. But, um... But, yeah, um... But yeah, he's going to be buried in Pennsylvania at one of the national cemeteries because he does get a plot since he served our country. He does get a plot in one of the national cemeteries. Hmm. Well, if you decide to do the stream, uh, if I'm still going, just let me know and I'll post it in the uh, side chat because... Probably won't go on too much longer here. Probably, really, in all honesty, probably thirty minutes or so, and then. Well, I'm not gonna it do up. it. At, I'm not gonna do it as a stream. I'm just gonna put it up as a as a tribute. Okay. I'm not gonna do streams. That's nice. I don't um, think I could handle a stream. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, that's. I, I thought you were talking about doing a stream. That's why I was. So yeah, you, you might be hesitant on on doing that. Uh, yeah. Speaking speaking of streams, I uh, know it's not a stream, but uh, Leo does have a video coming out, and I think thirty minutes, isn't it? Yeah, twenty five minutes actually. But so, uh, anyway, um, one of the things that led me away from being a Christian is reading the fucking Bible, of all things. Uh, in fact, that's uh, I think. Oh. That, I think that FFRF did a... (laughs) Sorry. Did you hit your funny bone? Yes, I did. So I went to grab my beer, and it tipped over, and then I brought my hand back and whacked my funny bone. So this is... I don't know what the fuck's going on here. Einstein and his convoluted-ass fucking ideas. And this oh-so-intelligent designer that designed, you know, my balls to hang, like... (laughs) Two feet outside of my body, you know, down practically to my knees, just dangling and jangling where, you know, they it gets all chafy and sometimes, you know, they get taut and it just like, who does that, you know? (laughs) That's really big balls. And and don't forget the intelligent, don't forget the intelligent designer that created, created, quote, unquote, created the baby shoot nuts to the poop shoot. Or the swallowing hole next to the breathing hole. Yeah, I think he wanted us to have anal sex. <laughs> he, did, he did put the G spot for the male uh, up the ass, so there's that too. <laughs> you know what G stands what for, talking. right? What? God? God. <laughs> you know something? Um, this brings me to an idea. I'm like one of the hardest atheist you will ever meet because <laughs> I, give it a smile. I, I would say you can you can get rid of hell you can get rid of you can make the bible sound as good as you want it to guess what the fact that i'm on fucking earth right now and there's a place above whatever supposedly be a heaven the fact i'm not there right now is all i need to disprove your bible because one why is your God giving me a second race place? Why am I not in the... But anyway... I was saying, why has God not given me the best place possible? Right. Which would be heaven. Why am I stuck with the second rate place where there's death, famine, there's sexual abuse, rape, Mm. all these fucking things on this damn planet and there's supposed to be this great afterlife. Why am I not there right now? Yeah. I don't see no justification no. for that. I know. And, it's, and, it's and, and I don't magic and, apple. You know and and, and you, you know what else? Christians are always talking about this nice nice paradisical 
paradisical afterlife, right? How come nobody's revving to get there? Paradoxical. Everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody wants to go now. No, oh, even the angels wanted to leave because they couldn't have sex, so they came down to bones of women. <laughs> Those angels were like, "What? Fuck this! We're going." I'm to Earth. bailing. Like, why'd you give me a? Why'd you give me a dick? On that's Earth. the point, girl. They can't fuck that. So that's because but of the anyway, so they can't fuck that. Yeah. But if if you look at, uh, okay, don't even uh, don't look at the Old Testament like right away, but okay. But even the Old Testament's important, okay? But in, in in way of Christianity, if you look at it the way it's supposed to be, right? But you look at Jesus' words, and Jesus said, I have not come to abolish the law. I've always found that very confusing. Yeah, or bring peace. <laughs> it's always one of those things where it's like, okay... He's come to fulfill the law and also give a new covenant, but also he's not come to do away with the law. It, that's always It's always been one of those things as a Christian that I never fully understood, and I still don't. Oh, you should ask him what, what makes him qualified to be the perfect sacrifice. Then you'll get all kinds of convoluted answers. Well, it's because <laughs> he's the sinless son of God, bro. But I want standard, yeah. though. <laughs> yeah. I can, I can name like five different places where Jesus broke the law, and that would make him not the perfect standard for sacrifice. And so they're like, oh, no, oh, no, yeah. no. Oh, yeah. He, he, healed on, he healed on the Sabbath. Not to mention he let his disciples pick wheat, I think, on the Sabbath or something well, like that. No one's picking weed. <laughs> smoke every day on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I, I, That's I, where I, Revelation I, came from. Well, another thing is... All I want to do today is wear my favorite shades and get stoned. <sighs> the, oh, and there you go. Uh, good timing. Oh, good timing. Yeah, the, the, another thing is when it comes to the Old Testament and should Christians follow the Old Testament is they'll say, you know, we don't have to follow the Old Testament anymore. Uh, but so they can, want we, to pick we can, and choose. Right. We can eat shrimp, but <laughs> gays still are, you know, gays are still an abomination to the Lord God. That's oh, a New God. Testament thing, though. Yeah, it's, well, it's, it goes back to the Bible is a buffet. You pick but, and choose what you want, and then you discard the rest. So one place buffet. where one place Jesus blatantly broke the law is that the law calls for the stoning of adulteresses, and we all know that story. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then he even sets the bar higher, says, like, nobody here is able to stone her. I'm the only one who's able to stone her, and he lets her go. He's like, well, technically, you should have been the one to stone her if you wanted to fulfill the law. Right, right. <laughs> Well, since that story was written a long time after and added, it doesn't really matter. I know. They don't believe that. That's <laughs> yeah, but, it was but, added to kind of come. Um, he's just saying yeah, that's only But, but we're, we're, not, we're not talking about what we know about the fucking Bible. We're talking about what they believe about the fucking Bible. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Or, or at least <laughs> I am. Point. At least I am. <laughs> Which is a major difference because they don't even know where their fucking butt comes from. Well, they all know it because there's a big <laughs> footnote that says it's not part of the original <laughs> manuscript. Although a lot of them seem shocked when you tell them. It's like they don't know. Well, they must do because they read the Bible, don't they? And it does say at the beginning. I don't know. Yeah, I have a beef with you, girl. Like, why'd you say I was wrong about John 9 too? That was... I was on point, dude. No, uh, you brought that up as uh, implications for reincarnation, and I, yeah. I don't see it. I'll okay, what, let me pull it up. Tell me the verse again. Uh, John nine two. So it wasn't. I was focusing on what they believe, <laughs> and so the question is: if a blind man, if they're asking, like, did he sin or their parents, and he was blind since birth, when was he have the opportunity to sin to make him blind from birth? It's either a, a future type of like Calvinistic, I'm punishing you for future sins, or you lived a, a past life and I'm punishing you for those sins. Um, okay, uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I was trying to listen, but I'm terrible at multitasking, as everybody probably knows. Uh, his disciples asked him, Rabbi, 
who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Gur. Yes. Gur, you mis you misspelled rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The, it's, go on, BS. The question is, when did this man sin? If they thought that he's the one who did the sinning, mm -hmm. when? Either before he was born, right? Like maybe in the womb, or in a past life, or this is a conviction for future sins, like a Calvinist model. Oh, okay, okay. I, I, I see. So this had nothing to do with reincarnation? It did, because like those are the only three options. He sinned in the womb, he sinned oh, okay. in a past life, or he okay. sinned in the Calvinism, and Rebecca doesn't believe in any of those. Okay, I, okay. Now I see your point. Okay, yeah. So it, it, they're asking if, if, if it was him who sinned, he who sinned, then obviously he was born blind, so he would have had to sin in another life, or it was the sin of his parents, according or a, to, or a Calvinistic future one, or or a Calvinistic. Which is, what one. is that minor, Minority Report, where they like start doing thought yeah, crimes and yeah. busting people for a head of time? That is a great movie. It, it actually gave me something to chew on. I'm like, wait, can you, it? Would it be morally right to stop someone from committing a crime before they actually willingly chose to commit said crime? I oh, thought that was really fascinating. Did, did oh. you know that the crime was going to happen? Only in a deterministic universe. Well, if, they, and, if free will exists, then no. In the movie, they, they did know. Uh, well, I mean, I think it was like a, a statistical like 98% or something crazy. So it wasn't maybe, absolute, but yeah. Maybe y'all can answer this question for me. Why God can't go... Uh, why is free will the burial that God can never overcome? I, what, what, wait, what do you mean? Like... Christians always say what do you mean? Do, do, do. Christians okay. always say they yeah. can't do something because of free will. God gives you free will, so that's why he allows sin to occur and all well, that. Well, the free win theodicy, the free will theodicy doesn't uh, overcome the argument from evil if that's what you're wanting to know. Any Christian yeah, that no. tells you, "Oh, well, the argument from evil doesn't work because free will doesn't know what they're talking about." And that's all I hear. Yeah. Uh, free will, therefore, babies get cancer. Because all, the only thing I, I need to say is, is, is it impossible for there to be a world in which humans possess free will, yet no sin occurs? And if they say yes, then it's as simple as asking, okay, what's the contradiction? Hmm. Free will only exists to get God off the hook. That's the that's the only I'll, reason. I'll, I'll always call it free will okay, to get out of jail but, free card. For you God. have to have free will. Come, but, come okay, free. all right, but free will... <laughs> Free will actually doesn't exist. That's actually not a thing. Well, I, I, I think it exists. I mean, insofar as humans have a, a sense of volition, yeah, I think free. Yeah. I think there's, there's free. It will. exists do, because we're do ignorant do of all op options. If we knew all options, then it wouldn't exist. But we are limited. Well, I mean, would there. the agent still be able to choose between the options there? If knowing knew all the yeah, options no, no, you no. have isn't the same as choosing one of those options. L Leo, Leo. I, I forget, there have been a few studies on this, and I forget which journals they're in, but they're in neuroscience journals, so that might narrow it down for you. They've I done don't know about anything, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I would just say that the majority of neuroscientists are, are, are compatibilists, not determinists. They, they've done studies where, um, um, you're, they put you in an fMRI and, um, I'm not even going to explain if fMRI, but anyway, they, they put you in an fMRI, right? And they, they tell you, you know, um, Okay, if you do something like wiggle a finger or anything, tell them the moment you have the conscious thought to wiggle your, your, your finger. Okay, that's what they tell you. They found that the neuronal firing for that action happens before the consciousness of the person to yeah, yeah I, I agree with that I'm a compatibilist I agree with that
that so you, it's not you making the case. Well, I, I would still say that there's a sense of the fact that volition can be reduced to neurophysiological processes doesn't mean that volition doesn't exist. Just like the fact that consciousness can be reduced to neurophysiological processes doesn't mean consciousness doesn't exist. I mean, unless you're an eliminativist, but then that's, I mean, that that's getting in the weeds. But yeah, I, 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 I mean, I, I, I guess it would just depend on what we mean by free will. When I think of free will, I think of some sense of agency, some, some sense of volition an ability to succeed or fail with respect to the desires that an agent has. Um, if you possess that capability, I would say you, you, you have agency, you have volition. Do you have the ability to deliberate. You, you, you have the ability to deliberate about your desires and on the actions or behaviors or what have you that would best um, um, conduce what your desires are. I, 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 I think that's that's also n the result of neurophysiological processes. I, I do have a question, Leo. What do you think about uh, proponents of, of determinism who say um, whatever your whatever you did five minutes ago, if we rewind the clock back, atom for atom in the universe, same condition, everything is exactly as it was. Uh, could you make a different choice? And they would say no, and then no. they would conclude there is no free will. That determinism is yeah. I would correct. just say, what well, what's that? the contradiction? It's it's entirely it, it, there's no contradiction in saying there's some possible world where the universe evolves up to some point uh, exactly as it is now, but mm -hmm. in this other possible world where we, we rewind it by some x time and let it play back up to that same time where we rewound it from. And that some things could be different that may even be the result of, of the volition of an agent. I, there, there's, I don't see any contradiction in that. So I would simply have to say, if they're going to say that that's not possible, what's, what's the contradiction? Isn't that where string theory comes from, more or less? As far as I know, no. Well, the thing is, that argument uh, that, that I just uh, proposed to you, uh, I've seen people like Rationality Rules and Cosmic Skeptic use it, and the way I see it is, I'm like, if if you if you buy that argument, then not only must you accept determinism, but I feel like you'd also have to accept fatalism as well. Yeah, I'm thinking so. Um, I actually made a video about the, that, the, hoping I'd get an answer from one there, of them. There's a lot of things <laughs> that I think that there's a lot of bullets I think have to be bitten if somebody's going to be a hard determinist yeah. because compatibilism is not, it, it's, it's, it's a semi determinist position. Ultimately all the aspect, because I, I, I mean, there's, again, there's no contradiction with being a compatibilist yet being like maybe a property dualist or something, but, and I'm speaking quite generally here. Most mm. compatibilists are probably going to be a physicalist or something like that with respect to the mind. So they're going to have no problem in thinking that ultimately the concept of volition is rooted in neurophysiological processes, but that there isn't still a sense of deliberation about the decisions or the actions that, that some agent has available to them. Mm. Yeah, because, well, I don't know. It's one of those things where the first time I heard it, I was like, so if we wind the clock back and everything plays out exactly as it, as it did... I just see no escaping fatalism, but it seems like most of the ones who uh, support that idea are not fatalist. They seem to, most of them, in my experience, seem to say, no, fatalism is not true. But I'm thinking if you follow that argument, I feel like there's no escaping that. So like you said, I feel like you have to bite on a couple more bullets than, than you would originally think. Oh, shit, it, yeah, I agree. It, is Danny a fatalist? No, is Danny is, I believe, a compatibilist. Ah. I agree. Danny should be here. Good point. <laughs> but most most neuroscientists and most philosophers are uh, compatibilists. Yeah, but the one thing that he and I disagree on, and, you know, we <laughs> just agree to disagree, is that he thinks there's a, he's a dualist. Yes, he's he thinks a property the, dualist. He's a, he thinks the mind's separate from the brain, and I don't. Speaking of which, I came across that stream. I was going through all my uh, streams I privated on Germania, and I did come across the one where Danny brings up the Pinocchio 
uh, uh, yeah, where, where, where Orgy came in. And I might go ahead and just clip that out and upload it on this channel because I thought it was really interesting. I, I feel like it's a poor analogy. But after going back and watching it, I'm like, okay, I, I get what he's saying in reference to the analogy. But yeah, it was a it was a fun little conversation. And Orgy loved it. <laughs> uh, me and Danny went on for so long. It's, it was forever. <laughs> I, I get what he was getting at, but nah, nah, man. Bad Danny, <laughs> try again. It, I had to kick off my own friend, the, a, a guy I've known longer than any of you on YouTube. Uh, he's a great guy, deconverted man. And he came on the stream and he's like, no, let me tell you that you're wrong. And I'm okay with that. But he would keep interrupting Danny. So I was like, D-Man, I'm sorry you got to go. And I kicked him out. <laughs> it's like, you can't let the other Damn, man. Why don't you just be, be a bitch about it? <laughs> you guys keep it up. Danny's going to show up here. <laughs> say, say his name three times. I was just about to say Danny, this, Danny, yes. Danny. Oh, shit. No, that's that's so tangible. Hey no, don't do it. Now they're both going to show up. Oh, Lord. Right now. <laughs> did, did you say, oh, did you mention, oh, boy? Yep. No, nah, he's not going to go. Oh, Tangelo, no. oh, Tangelo. Oh, oh Buffalo. Mm, no. <laughs> oh, Tangelo. Hi, I'm Oh, Tangelo. I'm Oh, Tangelo. I haven't seen him around lately. Have you seen the Shroud of Turin? <laughs> How do you not? Listen, when it comes to the Shroud of Turin, like, even if I grant, okay, yep, yeah, this is definitely the historical uh, cloth of Jesus or whatever, wrappings of Jesus. It's like, okay, so fucking what? <laughs> like, we're, no, like there, mean, there's I nowhere can, to go from there, even if I granted. Can, yeah, I mean, <laughs> but, but I did a stream where I disproved the Shroud of Turin from the Bible. Because the shroud of turns one sheet where you've got the head and, you know, all that crap. Well, mm. the Bible says there was a face cloth. Where the fuck is the face cloth? What is a face cloth? I've never heard that one. Face. Fa face. Oh, face. I thought you said faith. I was like, what? I'm like, it's where funny. where the fuck is face cloth? <laughs> Where the fuck is it? <laughs> you need the face cloth to believe in the shroud of Turin. Um, you need that yeah, cloth so you don't get the incest there's, demon. There's a <laughs> lot. There, there is a lot of people mad at Pine Creek right now. Yeah. Okay. So what, what are you seeing right now? Because I, I knew as soon as I they're saw just the mad post. that he kind of like enabled a lot of Doctor what what Doctor Price was saying and seemed to agree with a lot of it. And apparently. <laughs> Uh, Pine Creek uh, has a history of saying some things he probably shouldn't say. Oh, no. I don't know what they are, but I'll defend them. I, th I don't. I don't. I think the only most egregious thing is they need to be deplatformed. Okay, I haven't seen the Miss Vision podcast yet. What the fuck happened? Was uh, what was that in reference to uh, Doctor Price? Doctor Price. You'll just have to watch. It's Pine Creek's most recent video. Yeah, I, I'm going to do that after this. So, all, all I can tell you is is this, and if if you get it, you get it. If, if you know, you know. It was almost. It, it sounded a lot like if Pine Creek had Mike Lindell on his channel. Oh mm. my god! Oh shit! Hold on one second. Y you you know what you know what would be hilarious. To have Cat Kerr and Mike Lindell in the same room. That would be hilarious. <laughs> okay. Um, so I do need to wrap this up. But if y'all want to go on longer than another 10 minutes, that's fine. If not, I do have Leo's premiere uh, in the... You all should be there unless you're fucking pansies. Yeah. Which, I mean, a lot of you are pansies, so I'm not expecting you to be there because you're a bunch oh, of fucking pansies. Oh, <laughs> What's it I about? I reverse like, psychology, Leo. Leo. Who, we know you're no, a beta. Lisa, no. Lisa and I was talking about you. No, Leo. <laughs> what, what is it about? Am I even going to understand it? Wait, what are you talking about? Oh, uh, your video, I think. You're a physics dude. I don't... 
Jesus. I, this, isn't, this isn't hard to follow. This is follow the light. <laughs> I, I, well, I, yeah, that's pretty good, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> considering what the video is about. Yeah. I can follow basic physics. I can follow. I can follow betas. Oh, Leo, yeah. you you missed it on the last stream. We were reviewing uh, Bob Larson, the Exorcist. Bob oh Larson. My what, that was God. the funniest shit. One of the hashtags in the video was incest demon. <laughs> oh yeah, it was great. <laughs> yes. Incest um, demons. Um, yes. I'm actually gonna be doing a, a debunk of Bob Larson. Oh, uh, Orj, just get your comment. Yes, uh, I should be streaming Friday. I can't stream uh, Saturday. That was the funniest stream last week. Oh my fucking yeah. goodness. And then we oh, and then we looked at Jesse Lee Peterson, and oh my god, that I, I knew the guy was crazy. I've already seen some of his crazy stuff, but the whole women are evil; they worship the devil. And I fi shit. I finished the rap video. If you want to wrap it up with that, it's oh, two, yeah. minute, um, two minutes. Two minutes. I've got a question for you guys: How many times has Kenneth Copeland blown COVID away now? <laughs> blow you. Not enough. B.S. Lewis, uh, your video, I loved it. <laughs> you right, knew we're it. We're about was. to watch it right now. But, did I nail know. it? Oh my goodness, it's funny. Thank you. Did All I right. nail it? Yes, <laughs> nailed it right on the head. We're about to find out. It was a lot of the shit that we talked about last week, right? Yes. <laughs> All right, I hope the video doesn't lag, but here we go. If you submit to Jesus as the Alpha, then by definition, you are beta. When you return to the Father, your feelings, your passions start to disappear. Really. Do Which you love black people? Control. We're just trying to get Jesse to close down that hypocritical church, and he has been using that church. To <laughs> you gay? <laughs> How did you become gay? <laughs> Have you been with men? I would say. So you gay? Does God know you gay? Okay. Did he make you that way? Man! Are your, does your, do your congregation know that I'm gay? Like sexual of the epiphany. I never expected a Christian to be so gay. Can we say beta male? Gay beta male. You mm -hmm. were nasty, dirty, you know. Everything we begin to fall with went to hell. Amazing! Beta Beta! Uh-huh! You gotta stop lying to yourself about you. And then you can be free. Now I see a little game. <laughs> if you want to be free, which in pen, Satan is what you need. Satan! In that darkness, Satan is telling you that I'm attracted to what I hate. That I'm less than you. That is my going. I'm black and I'm slow, so I'm asking a question. Can we say beta male? Beta male. Evil, nasty, dirty, you know. Everything women get involved with turn to hell. Amazing. Beta male. Beta. I don't care what anyone says, and, and I'm okay with it. So much for the alpha. Satan. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> That's pretty Beta, funny, baby. Yeah. Beta I'm, about, male. I'm about to uh, share that. Too. That was funny. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Um, 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 okay, uh, Lisa. Do you, do you see logic? Do you, do you watch logic, Gar? Uh, uh, yes, yes, I love it. Uh, did, yeah, have a go. Did you get. Did you get uh, the Joker from Logic's channel? 
The Joker? Yeah. No, is it, are you talking about uh, this one here? Oh, yeah. sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. I think no, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't watched any of his stuff recently. Uh, I don't remember seeing one about the Joker. Oh, this wasn't recent. This was a while back. Oh, no, I missed that one. I'll definitely look it up though. That sounds entertaining. Bob's five fifty. But oh, oh my God, he's like, I just want to take a. Take a couple of showers and forget this ever happened. Ooh. He he went down a rabbit hole. Hold on, let me look that up right now. Watch it. Sorry, I was at work. <laughs> I was wondering what that noise was. He um, it wasn't really about the Joker. It was about like, I think, who knows what he's calling himself now. It. He used to be calling himself the righteous judge. Ugh, it sounds like a terrible person already. <laughs> <laughs> no, an um, atheist or a Christian? He thinks he's Jesus. Oh. What that the does, fuck? Okay, maybe I did see that video. If it's the same one I'm thinking of, that was a couple of years ago, I believe. That, that and, then, and then he's talking about, this is this video is for all atheists, but I'm specifically addressing the Joker. And so Logic's like, okay, who's this Joker guy? Seems like I need to know if I'm going to keep up with the righteous judge. <laughs> who is this Joker? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who is this Joker? Um, all right, listen, I have to wrap it up. I do All right. appreciate. Bye, uh, guys. Have a good one. I do appreciate everybody uh, tuning in, and I thank you all for actually joining me on the uh, on the actual stream. I do have that video we just watched by B.S. Lewis in the side chat, and also Leo Phileas, who is just here. He is live right now. Technically, it's not live; it's a premiere. It's premiering right now, so go check that out. Uh, you'll only be like four minutes behind. And it's probably, knowing Leo, it's probably going to be like a 10 hour video. <laughs> so uh, take care, everyone. Good night. Thanks, Kurt. Bye. Cheers.